at the end of time. Thirteen. O'clock. Hey everybody, what's going on? Yep. Uh, yeah. That was our new shit. Gotta. <laughs> I thought Jenny knocked it out of the park. I think it's good. I think it's. Good I just intro. finished that today, like this afternoon. Yeah. Actually, I was yeah. kind of rushing. Yeah, I thought it came out pretty good. Like you know, I'm getting a little bit better at uh, video editing. I'm still not really that great at it, but she you know. showed she showed me earlier today, and I looked at it. And I go, oh no, that's awesome. I like that. I said, don't change anything. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was good. Oh, I heard her going. Yeah, she is. She's going, <laughs> then I went down to. Uh, I went down to the Oasis, had a few, so I've already pre-gamed a little bit, but not much. Uh oh. Only had three. He's gonna be. You know how they are; they pour me doubles, so it's kind of like having be, six. He's gonna be running around talking about <laughs> ghosts and shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna ghost the fuck out. <laughs> gonna ghost the fuck out. Yeah, we're doing a fun paranormal show. Yeah. So we don't have to. Paranormal. So we don't have to worry about like. Yeah. You know, feeling bad about like people getting murdered and stuff. Shit like gets that. downer sometimes, man. I'm trying to. I'm trying to like. Make jokes about it, but it's like fuck. Yeah, man. you don't really want to. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I like paranormal and UFO for some reason. You know, a lot of people the, the UFO is flooded on the YouTube market. That's true. And a lot of dudes that talk about the fucking UFO stuff, I don't think they're very good at it. If you ask me, there's there's a few channels, but a lot of them are the very samey, and the guys don't really have the personality for it. You know, if you ask me, but there are a few good ones. Jenny doesn't like the subject though. She just she thinks it's samey, which it is. There's a lot. Yeah, I well the thing about it is that like all the best cases we've already covered right. them. You know what right. I mean? And it's like the rest of it, it's just kind of like what are you gonna do? It's like yeah. somebody was in Kansas and saw, saw a light in the sky. Do, the right. end. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're all just kind of like that. Yeah, I like some of the science programs that are about it. Yeah, they talk about it now. You know, like Avi Loeb. He's like on Event Horizon a lot, and they're postulating what what extraterrestrial civilizations could be like how many different what that shit's real interesting too you know whether they're technological or not and what technology ends up looking like what biology might end up looking like because there's a bunch of different ways they could go on a planet you know i think that's just cool to think about that and what it would be like if one of them came here i don't think they'd be biological i think i think fucking 2001 got it right It'd be like that. Tom Sykes says, paranormal true crime crossover shows are the supreme shows, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, to be honest, I'm kind of, like, sad that there's not more cases like that, where there was, like, a horrible... Like, like for example, like, the Herb Baumeister case, which yeah. was kind of, like, the platonic Weird. ideal yeah. of the... Because it was, like, a serial killer, and, like, yeah. horrible shit happened there, but then there was, like, haunting shit, like, afterward, too. Yeah. So it was kind of, like, both things That's going on. And like I said, you don't really have that happen much. No. You know, yeah, you could say Amityville Horror, but I think that, like, the Amityville Horror haunting shit was, uh... I think that was, one was, was a, made was, up. Yeah, I think that one was, uh, market forces working I mean, I think a lot of haunting shit is made <laughs> up, but you know what I mean? It's, yeah. You know what I mean? It at least the Herb Baumeister one was... And at least the Herb Baumeister one had the, um... You know, it wasn't as well-known. I mean, everybody and their mom knows about Amityville Horror. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... Uh, John Gora said, are you guys ever going to review the Greasy Strangler from 2017? I've been actually wanting to see that, so we probably will get around to it one of these days. I'll have to see. I'm going to look and see where it's streaming at. So maybe I'll put it in a poll like yeah. this upcoming week or something like that. If we can watch it for free. Yeah. We finally got on, to Jenny, we finally got on top of the bills with fucking the show. We're on top of it. Now we got to wait till next month. So... Uh, <laughs> Today we're finally gonna get the super chats that you guys fucking gave. Not today. What are you no, talking? No, about? What are you talking this about? This month, I mean, this month. Right? Yeah. End of this month. What I mean. You don't know what you're talking about. I know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been drinking. <laughs> this month we had the super chat. That's exactly. You don't know what you're talking so about. So we gotta get these damn know. super chats going, and fucking. Um, I wanna. We're gonna go ahead and put out another uh, fucking uh, message that we're looking for patrons. The channel's looking for patrons. The patronage has fucking slipped over the past couple of years. We're gonna try to get that up to about six hundred bucks a month, so we can keep this show going. We we know we got the most hardcore listeners on right now, going live. It's the way it always is. But we've got to, we're recording this, and this is for uh, y'all that can't catch us live. 
please, if you know, if you guys could send Jenny a fucking uh, some patron money there on um, uh, what's it called? Patreon. Was, almost Patreon. You just said. I almost it. gonna say OnlyFans, and I was like, well, we don't, we haven't released that video yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Graham Thurs. Thank you, for saying, Graham Thurs. Thank, Thank you, Graham Thurs. I like the little fireworks there with yeah, the yeah. little thing. That's or are they fireworks? Or yeah, yeah, I guess they're like fireworks or snowflakes or something. They're very very small. Uh, Dave is here. Hello. Had a mad day. You both are my rush hour home entertainment, so thank you. Thank you um, very much. You know, hey, that's what we, we try. We try to keep, yeah. like, people entertained. Mm-hmm. We try to keep ourselves entertained. It's not always easy. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. You gonna be all right? You gonna, you no gonna. make it. You sure? Yeah. Because you already seem kind of. Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. You weren't there that long. I mean, you were only there for, like, a, a couple of hours. Yeah. A couple hours. Which is not usually, I mean, you I drank three like, doubles of fucking oh, shit. Cuervo. Oh, my God. Yeah, Cuervo. <laughs> I'm not that fucked up. <laughs> no, and then I laid down. Super, I mostly, I was asl- when I came back, I almost almost fell asleep. Yeah, I figured. So I was kind of like in between sleep and awake, so. See, you always, you got, wake up. Well, you got to watch him because it's like right before the show started, like he came in and he brought the drinks and everything, and then like he went away, and then he was yeah. doing something. And then it was like getting closer to time and closer. I'm like, where the fuck did he go? Like he didn't come back, and I didn't hear anything. Yeah. I and then I ran to get him, and I was like, uh, I was afraid. I was afraid you'd like fall asleep or something. I was talking business with uh, Dimitri. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He gets. He always does something like right at the last minute, right. and then he like, gets distracted. No, he called me, so I got distracted. It wasn't my fault. Yeah. Okay. He called me. So. Oh, so you're blaming somebody else? That's okay. <laughs> I do what I. Shit. See, this is people. This is what. I, damn. Damn. I just see me. Yeah, she messed with me because she knows I'm fucking defenseless. Yeah. Whenever I start drinking, I get defenseless. See, she starts picking. It. She's a fucking. She's a harpy. She's one of those harpies from fucking. Hey, I from, pick on you when you're sober Jason too. From Jason the Argonauts, the old guy's <laughs> blind and the fucking harpies are coming again. Oh come on, you're not that. You're not that helpless. He's just trying to eat. You know what I mean? Fucking yeah, it's like that. <laughs> you're not that helpless. <laughs> Tom Sykes said, I just watched the haunting TV film last night in prep for the show, and because it's a kick-ass made-for-TV flick. Yeah, I kind of feel like we talked about, because we reviewed that movie not too long ago. Which movie? It was the TV movie. It's called The Haunted. The Haunted. Um, I think it's called that? The Haunted, um, and it's about the Smurl case. Remember, we just like we just reviewed it like a few months ago. Uh, yeah. And, and we probably talked about... That? Which one was that? They all started to jump. Well, I mean, when, when I start talking about the case, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. But that's the thing. And I think we've talked about the Smurl case a little bit before, because remember we've done a couple shows where it's like cases of the Warrens? Yeah. And the Warrens did, were involved in this one, so I think we talked about it a little bit on another one. But that's kind of one of the reasons why, like, I wanted to cover it, um just kind of you know more in depth or whatever but that's why i added a couple other haunted cases on there there are two that i'm pretty sure we haven't talked about so then that way it wasn't just like us in case we were like repeating information you know what i mean yeah tom sykes said the san pedro haunting is uh almost similar to enfield poltergeist case with the old dude entity and the san pedro uh case almost like the doris bither case yeah they both had uh barry taff working on them yeah. so we're going to talk about that one i've been wanting to do a show about that one for a long time because that's like a weird ass case Taft actually has a pretty good reputation with with Tom, with me. Um, he did good work on the entity case, yeah, and uh, some of the other ones. Based on things that he said, you know, I've seen Poltergeist. It was in my family. Based on things he he has said, I'm very sure that he's seen the phenomena. I don't think he's faking. Okay, but uh, he he mentioned some things in interviews that I was like, yeah, okay, he's seen it before. So, he's. I wouldn't put him in the in the case with like the Warrens, you know. Yeah. Which I think the Warrens saw a few stuff that was real, but they were more into making fake shit. Yeah, I kind of feel like they were like, well, you know, we just need to sell some books and some lectures and shit like that. So the phenomenon's too rare. You're not if exciting able... stuff doesn't yeah. happen, then we'll just like you know make it up. Yeah, the phen- uh, 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 real phenomenon is too rare. It's not common enough to make a damn career off of, you know. It just doesn't happen enough. Tom Sykes says, sure, you remember that film, Tom, when the father was getting raped by that fat man in a wig su- succubus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, okay, you remember. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. You looked up. Uh, yeah, I remember that one. I remember that scene. What I don't a, remember What a hilarious about. scene that was. Yeah, it was I mean, definitely you know, a dude. That was rape's, definitely Rape's a dude. not funny, but like the way that they kind of like did it, in the, and it was supposed to be a ghost anywhere, a demon or whatever. Yeah. But it, it was, was a dude in a costume, if you ask me. Well, yeah, it obviously was. Yeah. 
Maybe they couldn't find a woman. That would make it worse, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. This whole, and and the thing about it, too, is that since we were bringing up Doris Bither, she also said that she was sexually assaulted by ghosties. So I guess that's, like, kind of a common thing. I wrote about a couple cases like that in uh, Unseen Hand, you know what I mean? Where... But it's kind of it's kind of rare, really. It's the Smurl case and the Doris Bither case, and I think there was one other one, but I can't remember what it was, where people said they got raped by demonic entities. Uh, thank you very much, Senor Styx. Uh, if you came across James Dean's car pieces, are you haunted? <laughs> no, no. I don't think James Dean would haunt anybody. No. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Dean's gone. He's not the kind of guy that would be hanging around. He had. A, he has better shit to do. I, you would think. Yeah. Richard Brown said, have you read any of Colin Wilson's paranormal investigation books? I don't think so. Like, that name is familiar, but I kind of feel like maybe, but it was probably, like, a long time ago. You know? Zach said, uh, I saw somewhere once Christina Aguilera said she had sex with a ghost, and it was the best screw she ever had. Really? <laughs> I wondered if she really say that. Or was she serious, uh, or was she just fucking around? I don't know. I have to dig into that. <laughs> Tom's like, oh, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> well, Susie Sue sang, sang, a, sang a song that was about that from off the tinderbox called Sweetest Chill. Remember that? Uh-huh. And that was about fucking love romance with the damn ghost. Sweetest Chill. It's a good song. Well, yeah, I can see how that'd That's be. It's a goth girl fantasy. I don't know about fantasy, but it is kind of nice. It's like, oh, they just kind of be around like every now and then. What if that ghost just... was hot? Well, what? What I if don't that know. ghost was hot? I don't know. That's what that's what she was talking about. Hot ghosts. It's a hot ghost, yeah. <laughs> it's like a hot gothic ghost. <laughs> it loves you. I just, got, I don't know. It's like, It yeah. would be kind of weird because on the one hand, like maybe they would be like all ethereal and then they would just be there sometimes and not there sometimes. But then on the other hand, you would think they were probably around all the time, like watching you do everything so you wouldn't feel like you had any privacy, you know what I mean? There was a whole fucking movie about it called Ghost and Mrs. Muir. Yeah. Well, there's been more than Great one movie. like that. There's Great been movie. more than one like that. Great movie. We should probably review that. I yeah, if like. you guys haven't seen that, I think it was from the 50s. It was a black and white movie. Ghost and Mrs. Muir. About this woman that moves into this house. It turns out the house was haunted by an old sea captain who accidentally killed himself up in the upstairs. And he was in love with her. And he watched over, and, and there's a love story between this ghost and this woman. Uh, she had kids, I think. Did she have kids? I don't remember. I, think she I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen that. And, it, and he waits around for her to die. It's a good movie, real good movie. It's a chick flick. Waiting for you to die. <laughs> yeah, he's waiting for her to die. I could probably kill you just like by pushing you down the stairs or something like that. Like you just have to see it. It's fucking... a chick flick, but it, it's a real good chick flick. It's a horror chick flick. Well, they did one uh, later on. I caught, I want to say it was like the 90s or the early 2000s called Truly Madly Deeply. Uh, pretty sure Alan Rickman was in it. Wasn't Alan Rickman in that? Yeah, that was kind of the same thing, where it was like a living woman like falling in love with a ghost, or they yeah. fell in love with each other. Yeah, he helped her out because she couldn't make the bills, and it's just how that happens. What the ghost got a job? No. <laughs> you, you don't remember how it happened? No, it was. I said it was a long time ago that I saw it. <sighs> um, she couldn't make the bills, so what the ghost started to do is to tell her old sea captain stories, and she was writing them down, and so and got them. Oh, paid. okay, I got. You. And that was enough to pay for the house. And then, um, I don't want to spoil the movie, man. I mean, you're making me spoil the movie. but he, No, he, I'm not making you. I'm not, uh, I didn't say anything. All right. He, it's a old, real old movie. He decides that the captain, he just, the ghost of the captain decides over time that he's fucking her life up, that she's got to live a normal life. So he makes her forget. See, but normal lives are overrated. Yeah. <laughs> well, that kind of happens too. He, he uh, you just got to see the movie. That's why I always kind of bumps yeah. me out. Like, it movies like, well, you need to live a normal life. I'm like, fuck that. Who the hell wants to live a normal life? Yeah. Well, she got fucked over in normal life in the end. Yeah, I guess. But he was waiting for. Her. It's just, it's a good movie. It's like a. That's another. Slash we should horror. probably do that. I'm gonna write that down yeah, because yeah. I'll forget okay. otherwise. All right, but we down. should probably review it because yeah. I haven't seen it since I was a fucking Ghost kid. Ghost and Mrs. Mo- it's classic. Yeah, I know. I haven't seen it since it's I was like, a kid. It's uh, like it's up there with Wizard of Oz. I would say in terms of fucking epicness. 
around that same time. Oh, and I, I also have to write down the greasy strangler because yeah. we got to do that one too. I'm just I'm writing on my whiteboard because I haven't put up my my January calendar. <laughs> So I'm just writing on my little calendar over there like that. Okay. So uh, there was uh, something else I wanted to like laugh Bang about. Uh, Mango's going, spoil the way, it's a great film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody's going, great score by Bernard Herrmann. Yeah, see, and yeah. we were just talking about him the other day because he did and the score. And Rickman was in it. Yeah, Alan Rickman was in Truly yeah. Madly Deeply. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Rex jo Harrison was in fucking, um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, fucking Ghost of Mrs. Muir. That's right. Y'all know the movie? That's a great movie. Yeah, like it's it's a classic, like yeah. I said, but I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Yeah. John Gore said, around Halloween, the Goodwill store has a banner saying, we know creepy. I think better would be everything in our store is haunted. Could apply all year. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. They should actually probably, they should lean into that. Some people like probably love it. Granther said, y'all are making fun of ghosts doing it with humans, but hundreds of millions believe a ghost impregnated a virgin named Mary. That's, ex that's, that's actually, right. that's true. That's right. Yeah, I mean. That's what they were talking about. Uh, yeah, basically. pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, it's a, it's a distinction without a difference, really. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... Are you sure you're all right? Yeah, why wouldn't I be? <laughs> okay. You just like don't seem like all that. You kind of seem like you're out of it a little bit. Mm, no, I'm just thinking. All right. Uh, are you ready to get into like Let's some of it. these cases? Yeah. Or you know, you want to bullshit about something else? Or, no, no, we're ready to go. Are you sure? Okay. Ready to go. Oh, you should tell everybody that you fin you got all your stuff for your... Uh, oh, that's right. For your thing. For yeah. your costume. I ain't gonna tell them. <laughs> okay, I got, I got everything um, for a uh, band costume from the fucking... That Dark Knight movie. Mm -hmm. Got the mask. It's pretty good. There's some changes I gotta make to it. I got the vest. I got the pants. I got the leather fucking forearm guard that he has um i got a chain i got the boots that he wore pretty close but there's some leather work i'd have to do i gotta add some straps which i have everything for that i got all the leather tools to do it and i got 20 milliliters of fucking trend coming so i'm gonna do that i'll be it went, once i get that done that trend's gonna fucking take me to the next level if people can put up with me for that People I'm, meaning me. Yeah. I'm going to try to do that kind of slow. We're going to see how it goes. That first cycle I'm just going to hide rough, in my man. office and lock you out. I hate that shit. I fucking <laughs> hate Trent. It's terrible. All right. Um, it just makes you a bitch, man. And it, But we're, we're going to see. It won't be as... Uh, maybe I built up a little bit of tolerance towards it. And uh, <laughs> the, that 20 milliliters is two bottles. I'm... I'm going to break that up, maybe do that over the next maybe year, maybe six months. We'll see how it goes. All right. That's that's two cycles easily right there. And um, I'll pick up 15 pounds on that probably. We'll see. And then there's good other shit I'm going to do in between all that. But I'm already fucking pushing Tom Hardy fucking Bane f physics, uh, physique anyway. But I'm going to look real good for that. And we're going to do a photo shoot. Ready to do a photo shoot? Well, sure. I have Brian come over and do the photo shoot if you want to do it. Yeah. Have I mean, Brian he he'd probably shoot. take better pictures than me. Yeah. I mean, because he's Brian like an actual it. photographer. Yeah. Have Brian come <laughs> out. And then fucking you can do all the touch-up stuff, the changing backgrounds and all that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do something with it. It's going to look real good. And I, I'm trying to get ready for um, uh, for Halloween. But so I'm going to do the whole cosplay thing. Muscle cosplay. Yeah, I don't know when I'm gonna get started on mine, but because it's gonna be ready, mine's gonna be ready. It will. I mean, we got a long time, but now the fe the store bought shit that I got, I'm gonna change some of it because it's good, but it's not as good as I want it to be. It's not totally accurate. The colors don't really lend it. It's I'm gonna age the suit so it actually looks like it's been worn, you know, and kind of roughed up and like it did in the movie. It's gonna look real good. It's gonna look good. I'm probably going to add a radio to it and a throat mic because that really should have been there. Um, that would look good also because I already have that. We'll see. Murder Hornet said, I was a chef at an over 100-year-old hotel restaurant that was supposedly haunted by a sea captain but never seen anything. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I've lived in a couple of houses that other people said were haunted, like my grandfather's house, which is gone now. It got torn down. But my um, mom and all her siblings grew up there, and they always said it was, like, super haunted. They heard people walking around on the roof. They had their blankets torn off, like, all kind of stuff like that. And I lived there for a long time, and I never heard or saw anything. Even I wanted to. Like, I kept waiting for, like, something creepy to happen, but it's like the house didn't even creep me out. It was actually a really cool house, I thought. I was kind of sad when they tore it down. Tom Sykes said the made for TV ghost film, The Haunting at Seacliff Inn, starring Ali Sheedy, is a pretty decent film. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, that is actually very decent. And the 1996 made for TV ghost film, The Uninvited, starring Bo Bridges. I feel like I've probably seen that one too, but I don't remember that much about it. Actually, those are two more that I should write down because I specific I do remember Haunting at Seacliff Inn being a good because I think I saw that not too long ago. But so I'm going to write those two down and haunting at sea cliff and haunting at sea cliff. You want, you want to talk while I'm writing? No, 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 no. There's no reason nothing I can talk about. <laughs> I'm not going to say, I'm not here to entertain these people. Yeah, you are. I am? Yeah. Okay. I'm just looking at Pookie. Look at Pookie. Look over your shoulder. Look at, look at, look at. What's she doing? I can't see because my wig's in the way. <laughs> oh my god or Lay it on her back Like a I, jelly bean she, <laughs> you, you look like You look like A fucking gummy she, bear She looks like A little gummy bear like gummy. She's in gummy bear position yeah. <laughs> Back legs Splayed out On the side She's, You need to sit Lady like You're not lady like At all That's okay That's what yeah. it, That's what She's I like, like well, about I'm a her I'm not lady like yeah, okay. <laughs> Alright yeah, she's not a prissy at all. No. She's just kind of like, blah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She's like a total tomboy. Sometimes she gets prissy, though. She folds her, hand, folds her arms up like that and puts her hand on her, you know, puts her fucking chin on her fucking paws. Yeah. You ever seen her do that? Yeah. You try to get prissy on a motherfucker, too. I've seen you. Every now I've and then. I've seen you. Yeah. But usually she just kind of like splays around. <laughs> like, yeah. like splays around her back like, what? Yeah. What are you looking at? Uh, have you seen Ghost Watch? Yes. I actually did a discussion of it on my Scare Salon channel not too long ago. But yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen it. Uh, John Gore said the other uninvited is a mutant cat film with Clue Gulliger. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that one. He said it's hilarious. Uh, look up Gibson in Apalachicola, Florida. And then everyone's amazed that Tom's being quiet. Uh, no, I'm not being quiet. <laughs> no, like what I just said to talk when I was writing. Um, Murder Hornet said you have to look at Messenger, please. So he went to go get ice. This like, see Florida, you guys. You put you fill the cup up with ice, and then like ten minutes later, and the fucking shit is all melted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah, Ghost Watch is really really good, and I feel like more people should see it. It's kind of like it's not really found footage. It's like a mockumentary or like a fake live show that was in the UK. Let me turn the fan on. Uh oh, Pookie's gonna get mad. I'm not worried about Pookie. Pookie fan's on. Fan's she, on Pookie. She, she <laughs> shook her head. She's like, no no no. No, no. <laughs> Look, it's gonna rattle. She's like, I don't she like She sees it. I don't like it. Thank yeah. you, Jeffy Art. Oh my god, I love that little animation. It's like a little it's like a little fruit with feet and pom poms. <laughs> Do you see it? I see it. That is cute as shit. <laughs> so happy. All right. So are we are we ready to talk about like some demon rape? Ben rape. Ben ready. Ben Ben rape. Ben, ben rapey. <laughs> let me sit here. Ben rapey. I mean, let me sit here and be drunk. Let me sit here and be drunk. You better not fall asleep. No, on I'm the not. No. It's we a main show. See, now she, uh, see, no, she's trying to set me up for failure already. <laughs> Is that what I'm doing? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good, man. Okay. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> you're just, I don't know. I'm just kind of worried about it. No. All right. You're worried too much. Well, that's kind of my deal. You you know, how long have you known me? That's just what I'm like. I can't help about it. About 11 years, 13, 12 years. <laughs> I can't help it. I tell myself the same thing every day. Like, quit worrying about shit, but it's like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know what I mean? The only thing that the only thing that would like probably do it is if I was medicated, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. So, so I just got to deal with it. <laughs> Worry too much. I know. That's what I mean. I know, but I can't do anything about it. That's just the way I am. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, all right. So let's talk about the fucking Smurls. 
uh, you know, the, well, the demons were fucking the Smurls, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know, are they still around? The Smurls were the ones that had the, that were living in the, in the, in the, uh... In the duplex. Yeah, but it was also a, a, uh, a fucking funeral home, wasn't it? No. I was thinking the Snedeker. The Snedeker. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we talked about that. This sounds real like... familiar. I know these guys. As soon as you start talking about it, I'll remember, I'll remember who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll remember. So, okay. So, the mom and dad are Jack and Janet Smurl. Uh, and they're both Catholics, hence the involvement of the Warrens later on. Spoiler alert. So, they were originally living in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. But I guess in 1972... There was a hurricane, Hurricane Agnes, and I just don't know if it fucked up their house or it fucked up the town or something like that. So they ended up moving to a place called West Pitson in Pennsylvania. So I guess Jack had been in the Navy, uh, and he was a his job was he was a neuropsychiatric technician. So I guess if you went in, because I had to, I looked at I had to look that up. I'm like I kind of have an idea what that is, but what exactly is that? It's a dude that puts those shock electrodes on your head. Probably. That's what I was saying. Like yeah, that's yeah. the picture that comes yeah, up. Yeah. Like when you, it's like is like a woman putting electrodes on somebody's head. Yeah. <laughs> that's what. Yeah. So that's what. That's what you do. So when they moved uh, in 1972, they had two daughters whose names were Dawn and Heather. Now the house that they moved to was actually half of a duplex. Like I said, so the other half was um, that was where Jack's parents, John and Mary, lived. So I don't know if they lived there before, if they all moved together. I thought they already lived there, and they're just like, hey, we have another half of a duplex, so I'm just moving there. So they move in there. Everything seems fine at first. Like, Jack got promoted. Um, you know, he was coaching his daughter's softball team, all that kind of stuff. Janet got pregnant again. You know, she was volunteering at the school and all this other kind of stuff. So they had uh, twin girls not too long after moving, and the little girls' names were Shannon and Karen. Now, this house is on Chase Street. It's pretty famous, like, so you can find it. So they lived there for a year and a half with nothing untoward happening. But in January of 1974, little stuff, little paranormal things started happening. Uh, one of the first things that happened was, like, a weird, uh, you're going to laugh at this. I did. Uh, a weird stain appeared on the brand new carpet that no one could explain. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there was that. Couldn't have been that some kid dropped the shit and didn't want to fess up. The, see, that's kind of my suspicion. Like, because that's not the first thing that I would jump to. Like, if right. a, a mysterious stain appeared on the carpet, I'd be like, um, somebody, one of the pets peed on it, or yeah. somebody dropped something and was like, why is it me? You know what I mean? That's you were kinda... some kind of fuck session going on. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah, Who's like, getting it on over uh, here? God damn it. <laughs> Get the carpet shampooer. <laughs> yeah, did they not have yeah. a carpet shampooer? Yeah. That would have been really weird if they had like a weird stain and like they, they, they brought out the Electrolux and it didn't, yeah, yeah. And it didn't like fix it. It just yeah. stayed there. Yeah, you know if y'all I mean? don't have a carpet shampooer from Electrolux, get that shit. <laughs> I got one. Tom yeah. has an old school Fucking one. He right. was so proud of that. Hell yeah. I bought that shit <laughs> I could use. I used to sell them. So I was going, these, I know how good these are. The bitches work. <laughs> Yeah, he he talks a lot about that vacuum mm. cleaner mm. <laughs> or the or the carpet shampoo. Or yeah, oh yeah, it is kind of it is nice to have. Folds actually. up, small, fucking shampoo your whole fucking carpet. Smell good in there, man. Fucking <laughs> clean up all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Better than the vacuum cleaner. Use them both together. Well, now I'm selling the shit again. <laughs> That's what he used to. Do. He used to, do, but he used, used to sell them shit. Yeah, he used to be a door to door. He used to be a door to door vacuum cleaner salesman. No, it wasn't door to door. Well, you had like you. Went I had out telemarketers to, and right, shit telemarketers that would get me in there. That would go over, yeah. So yeah, it's not, just... it's not efficient enough to go door to door. That's old school shit. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in the sense that you went to people's doors, but they were already expecting you. Yeah, yeah, I had appointments. Okay. Yeah. How I got in there was kind of fucking sideways, though. There's no way I could lose money because I had fucking already been hired to fucking shampoo those carpets. Yeah. So that was how I got in the house. And then once you're in there, you start talking to me, sell them those machines. If they don't buy that machine, it's okay. They're going to fucking give you the money to shampoo that carpet. Yeah. And I'd fucking make 200 bucks a fucking pop. Get a couple of them a day. I was making big money. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it under the table. But listen, whoosh, I don't have to worry about that. Well, you already just said it to everybody. So. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. So they can't they, prove anything. They're, they're not going to come after they you can't after, prove after all this stuff. Yeah. 
Granther said, my house must be haunted then because weird stains show up daily. Not that buying nine and 11 year old would ever cause such a thing. Yeah, see, that's kind of what I was expecting. Yeah. So, um, the, so after that, they also had kind of like your, your standard, like kind of rapping and scratching noises, uh, behind the walls. Toilets start flushing by themselves. Yeah. So there's that. That's pretty common. Uh, drawers open and closing on their own. Uh, rocking chairs kind of like rocking back and forth with nobody in them. Again, very, very common. You see that a lot. Um, they said also that these weird like scratch marks started appearing on the bathtub, the sink, and the bathroom walls. Yeah. And that the water pipes leaked all the time even when they even after they'd been repaired like a bunch of times like they'd have a plumber and come and fix it and then like it would start leaking again like inexplicably well you know what i'm gonna say it's all starting to sound like typical poltergeist fucking well yeah that's what i just said this is this is all like really really common shit real common reported phenomenon yeah. yeah i mean the wrapping the scratching the toilets flushing yeah things that don't seem right you fix something it doesn't really fix drips leaks shit like that anything that's unexplained and a nuisance and any kind of unexplained nuisance sometimes poltergeist especially if it's if it's all happening at the same time like if you just had leaky leaky shit you would never think poltergeist but if you're having scratches and knocks and raps and all this leaky shit happen then you go there's something wrong here it's like this poltergeist yeah. is trying to like drive me crazy drive by me doing all crazy. these little bitty, all these like, little bitty annoying fucking, things. Yeah, <laughs> things keep fucking disappearing, disappearing, and then you find them in the middle of the room, sitting there waiting for you, all stacked up in a pattern or something. You know, it's poltergeist. Speaking of which, one of my little canisters of coffee that I hadn't opened yet. Yeah. Pretty sure that disappeared. Did it? It was underneath that sink over there. Yeah. I because I had two of them. I bought a pack of three. I drank one of them, and then I just opened the second one, yeah. and then I still had the third one underneath, but I went under there today, like, to get something, and it wasn't there, and I was like, where did the third one go? I didn't take it. It's around here somewhere. And then I was thinking, well, Pookie, like, climbs around down there, but there's no way she would have been able to move that, because I looked all around, it's I was like, big. maybe she, yeah, and I was like, maybe she knocked it behind something, but I can't find it, so it's like, I have no fucking idea where it It'll went. It'll turn up eventually. Well, I hope so. Yeah, that was just, like, really, really strange. I was, like, looking in yeah. there and going, where the fuck did that go? Then I thought, hmm, poltergeist. Moving my fucking coffee we'll can. We'll see. Or po- What? Yeah. What's the matter? She's fucking yelling and runs in. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about you. Talking She's about like, you. I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> she probably heard her name. Well, yeah. Well, she was fucking around in the cabinet yeah. last night. That's why I thought that. Yeah. But, I, but I couldn't find it. And it's too big. It's not, like... You know, a tiny thing that you could lose. It was. It's big. It's like a big canister. So I don't think she could have like hidden it or nothing. Just messages there. Um. Yeah. Uh. Another good Pennsylvania haunting would have been the Deanna Simpson case, which was covered by a news crew. While activity happened on camera, proving the home was haunted. The videos on YouTube. Yeah, we'll have to like look that up. We'll have to look that up. <laughs> Kinky ghosts leaving food stains. <laughs> Poltergeists don't drink coffee. How do you know? I mean, we don't know. They steal shit, though. A splosh ghost is stealing Jenny's coffee. <laughs> I mean, I have another can, but it's just like, I I bought a three-pack. It was cinnamon hazelnut. I had a three-pack of cans, and I drank one can because I just threw it away, like, a couple days ago. Then I just opened the second can yesterday, and the third one was still under there, but now it's gone. So, I don't know. You did it. You did it. No, nah, I didn't do it. Yeah, you did. Your your poltergeist did it. No, nah, I didn't do it. So yeah, so where was I? Okay, so leaky pipes. Then you got disembodied footsteps, and um, sometimes you had a radio that wasn't plugged in that would kind of like come on every now and then, like you'd hear static or music on it and something like that. Um, also, one of their TVs caught fire uh, at one stage. So uh, then after that, like, it was that kind of stuff, like, to start with. And then it started getting, like, worse, where it was starting to do, like, the whole, you know, uh, really, really bad, like, vile smells. Like, it smelled like rotten meat. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of stuff. And Jack also started saying that invisible hands would, like, start caressing him at times. So I was like, mm, okay. So we're, we're leading up to, we're leading up to the, to the demon reap that happens, like, later on. So apparently this, these disturbances went on for like about a year. And after that, 
Jack's parents, who remember lived in the other half of the duplex, they also started reporting some activity as well. And I guess they had lived there for longer. So I guess this was kind of strange. So they first started saying like that there were like weird cold spots in their house and they kept hearing a voice that was, what are, what are you doing? Trying to get in the goddamn cupboard. Get out of there. Okay. (laughs) It's like, I just keep hearing all these noises over there. It's like really distracting. Um, yeah, so should they keep hearing they keep hearing these voices that are like swearing and screaming at each other and all this other stuff, and it sounds like it's coming from Jack and Janet's side of the house, like they were arguing, and you know they'd be like, "What the fuck? Like, why were you guys screaming? Like, we could hear you through the wall." And they're like, "Dude, we weren't even home." So there was that kind of shit going on too. Um, Janet also thought that she heard her mother-in-law like calling her name from the other side of the duplex. Like she would hear her name called like in her mother-in-law's voice, even when her mother-in-law wasn't home or said, yeah, I didn't call you. So there was that kind of shit. They, they each thought that the other one was making noise. You know what I mean? So um, a month after that, like after the parents started uh, experiencing some shit, then Jack and Janet also started having like cold spots in their house. And, um, Janet there, and I think they put this in the movie that they made. The movie's called The Haunted, I'm pretty sure. I think it came out in the 90s, like the early 90s, I feel like. 92, 93, I can't remember. We just reviewed it not too long ago. But she was, like, down in the laundry, like, doing laundry uh, in the basement and heard somebody, like, calling her name. You know what I mean? Now, she also said, not too long after this, that she saw an apparition of, like, a very shadowy figure. Like, they didn't have a face or anything. It was just kind of like a black shadow person. And they kind of walked through the house and, like, disappeared through the kitchen wall. Now, Jack's mother, Mary, who lived in the other side of the duplex, also said that she saw what she thought was the same figure, like, appearing on the, like, through the wall, like, on her side of the duplex. Like, it walked through the wall. You know what I mean? So, they reported that as well. Uh, The oldest daughter, whose name was Dawn... She also said that she'd seen kind of these black ghostly figures like floating around in her room, like shadow figure type things. Mm. So at this point, shit starts to get violent. Um, Because, so I guess like one night, Jack said like he was laying there in bed next to his wife and he heard somebody whispering, like a young woman's voice, like whispering. And then he turned to look at his wife and he saw like this, shadowy figure like running up her leg uh jack and janet both reported that they had been levitated from their beds on many occasions and janet levitated from their beds yeah like so they're in their beds and they lift up off the bed and they're like what (laughs) look i gotta tell you i was in fucking one of the best poltergeist cases i've ever fucking read about only thing better would be fucking fucking um was it Winfield? No, uh, what, what's that? Uh, Enfield, Poltergeist. And I didn't see no levitation. I'd be real fucking impressed. That right there is a fucking... That's quite a claim. That's quite a claim. It is quite a claim. I'd like to hear some more about that. Because them just claiming that made me kind of like go, what? All right, but I'm going I'm to I'm reserve Well, the thing that. about it, if you're going to... Just theoretically... If you're going to fake a poltergeist haunting, you're going to tell people that you had, like, a haunting or something. Yeah. I think it would behoove you to not go too outrageous with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the second you start being like, oh, I got levitated out of bed and flung against the wall, or, you know, I got raped by a ghost or something like that, then people are going to, like, not believe you as readily. Just saying. (laughs) It's quite a claim. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I saw a lot of objects move. It was scared the shit out of me, but levitated, out of bed, picked up, I had stuff thrown on me. But, you know, that, you know. In, in Enfield, the little girl said, somebody said they saw the little girl levitating, but she never made that claim. She, she also, and we don't know, because that was just like one person, yeah, like from down in the person. street, right? Yeah, the person down the street saw, claimed that she saw the little girl levitating, out of her bed floating up around the ceiling and she was down the street and she saw it. Which I don't know how you do that. How hard is that to see somebody's into somebody's bedroom from up the street, you know, and they're in the second floor. I think it was kind yeah, of Yeah, it just kind of seems like 
Yeah. I can't really imagine. Yeah, it would be like hard to see. Hard and like to see it through might... screens and fucking shades and shit. No, I mean, I like yeah, that. I mean, like I think back then in in England they wouldn't have had a screen in the window. Yeah. But they were too poor for them damn insect screens. No, I don't think they do that that much over there because they don't they have, have like bugs. Oh, yeah, they, <laughs> they really eat everything. They eat everything, so there's no bugs there. <laughs> they eat up all the bugs. No, I was kidding, but um, it's just uh, quite a claim, you know. Uh, and I make some big claims in Matt Mountain Poultry Guys, but the shit happened. We were there. We saw it. But the levitation thing, man, that's. I want to say that's going too far, but then again, I wasn't there. Well, Mine and could have done that. That's what shit. that's what I was just gonna say. That like it's you, not a big leap. You said to me yeah. on on several occasions that it had that strength. at the time, yeah, yeah, that you said some of the shit that it could have done. Well, it, if it wanted to, it, it could have it done. It could that. have done it, but it didn't. Right. Was, you said it's that. weird. Yeah, it had enough strength that if it wanted to, it could easily have killed you. But it, that's not what the motive. Me and Red said that we're like this thing could easily kill you. It has the strength. That's one thing that would scared us about it. You know, you didn't know what to expect. From well, it. anything can, that can just pick shit up and like, well, yeah. and yours in particular pushed a whole like big bunk bed against yeah. the back of a door. So it's like if it can push something that was a couple hundred pounds, yeah, then it could like you know pick up a concrete block and fling it at your head. Easy. What scared us mostly was how fast it can move an object and how silently. You just turn around, there'd be a bunch of objects behind you, and those you know it stacked up or something, and they'd come from other parts of the house downstairs and they didn't pass you you know what I mean like how the fuck did that get there without passing me did it go through the floor or did it teleport because it definitely wasn't moved there by normal means or it would have passed you coming up the hallway type of deal you know so that was what worried us more than the strength it was like can it teleport an object because it seemed to be it seemed to be teleporting them into there I wonder if it could teleport a person. Well, what what if it could teleport an object into you and kill you? Oh, shit, yeah, I guess. See, that's yeah. what I was worried about. Right. Or if it could teleport an object above your head and it falls and hits you. That's See, that's see, what I was thinking. That. But yeah, if it could teleport right. something. I mean, theoretically, it could teleport something inside your body. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, hey, I'm going to take this golf ball yeah. and I'm going to teleport it right into your, like, esophagus. Right, but it was rare for us to catch or anything your moving. trachea. It was rare for us to catch anything moving. So we weren't really sure what the mechanism was. You know, the Lois and Red saw pillows fly off the bed and the fucking sheets come off and wrap around. And she felt something fucking touch her, you know, up around her leg and go up her waist and stuff like a snake. But it was invisible, couldn't see it. But that was only part of what it could do. Some kind of exotic physics. It wasn't physical, whatever it was. Some kind of quantum fucking force. Yeah. But, you The force from Star Wars, it was like that. Red said that. He goes, but what is this? This is like the force from Star Wars. <laughs> you know, it just makes shit hover, you know. Weird. It is weird, yeah. Yeah, it's weird. So, I mean, whether it's true or not, I don't know. I have my doubts about these two. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they did say that they were levitated from their beds. And Janet said that she got uh, flung out of bed uh, a few times, too. Now, their other daughter, Shannon, um, was also supposedly thrown out of her bed and uh, hurled against the wall. And one time, either it was either a ceiling fan or a light fixture. Like, I'm not sure. Maybe it was a ceiling fan that had a light fixture in it. Um, kind of crashed down only in a few inches away from her, like almost killed her. So there was that. Uh, also, they had a German Shepherd named Simon, and he got thrown around uh, as well. The dog did. So, you know, poor, poor dog. Uh, so the foul smells got a lot worse. Uh, so bad that... Is it raining? Sounds oh, okay. like rain. Yeah, it? it's raining. It's raining. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Duh. It says rain off and on right there. Did like I, put the, uh, I think I put the motorcycle in. Like on my little. Let me look. I heard. There. I heard the garage door. So. You heard open and closed, right? Yeah. I think so. Right. Let me see. I mean, because the garage is right underneath this office, it, so it it's like, like when the garage door opens and closes, it's really, really loud in there. So when you came back, I was pretty I sure I heard it. Yeah, I think I did it. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Watch out. Falling. <laughs> yeah, you're so you're you're sober. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. 
so yeah so ever so the whole this whole house is like stinking out like the family is like gagging all the time also and they also showed this in the movie that uh the neighbors they said that they would hear like somebody screaming and like swearing and stuff like that like from inside the house even when nobody was there so it's like it seemed like a lot of neighbors even knew what was going on it's like oh it's the screaming house you know what i mean so there was that they did put that in the movie like i said i don't know if that was true or not i don't know how many of the neighbors they interviewed for this kind of shit so at this point uh the smurls are just kind of like okay well we don't really know what the, what the fuck to do so they called up guess who the warrens yeah so the warrens show up in 1986 so this has been going on for like several years because the phenomena started in 1974 so they've been living with this for 12 years i'm sure it wasn't constant you know what i mean 12 years then it's not poltergeist yeah poltergeist is usually sh usually short duration I'm talking about haunting yeah steve maris says that some hauntings have poltergeist like effects so but usually poltergeist is less than six months yeah that's true yeah um so the Warrens show up in 86 and they have a psychic with them. So just like the Warrens usually do, they show up and they're just like, well, you know, how strong are you in your faith? And have you, has anybody been playing a Ouija board and all that other kind of shit? Um, you know, have you done something bad that like invited demons into the yeah. shit? They're trying to like victim blame. Did like, you blaspheme like me the church? Yeah, they're Some always, like, like asking <laughs> questions like that. Have you taken the Lord's name in vain? Yeah. Have you done anal? You know, did, did, you partake, <laughs> did, did you partake in sodomy and, and homosexuality? Yeah. You I let the demon inside of your body. Yeah, I wonder Shame if that you. was one of the questions they asked. Probably, yeah. knowing them. Yeah. It probably was. So, uh, so yeah. So, this Merle said, no, man, we didn't do any of that shit. So, uh, so, get off our case, I guess. I mean, you know. So, the Warrens, like, go tour the house. And, uh, as they do, they're always, like, very sure of how many entities you have, like, uh, you have a problem with. So they said, okay, you got four presences in the house. Four. One of them is kind of like an old, like, an elderly woman who seems harmless. Uh, you got a young girl who is possibly violent. Uh, a man who probably died in the house, either of illness or suicide or something like that, or, like, some violent way. And of course, guess what? A demon. Yeah. Because they can't. There's always a demon. There's always a demon. It's the Warren. Well, it's because fucking Mr. Warren is a demonologist, so there's got to be a demon in there somewhere. He's trained fine demons, like a witch hunter. <laughs> you set a witch hunter for loose, he's gonna fucking find a witch. That's his job, and you're gonna pay him. Yeah. You know, you called me here to find witches. I'm here to get my money. I'm gonna find a witch. I'm, if you, if I can't find a witch, I'm gonna make a witch. You know, that's the same thing. That's how Ed was. Well, and I kind of feel like find a demon. what they started doing too. I feel like in some of the later cases was like, oh well, you have all these other ghosts. Oh, and then by the way, there's a demon too. Because I yeah. kind of feel like maybe they were cognizant of the fact that yeah. you know they were just coming to everybody's house and being like, it's a demon, you know. What I mean? So now they're just saying, oh no, it's a ghost, ghost, ghost. Oh yeah, but there's like a demon over here too. We also have to understand Christian Christian culture at the time. Uh, I don't know if it's still like this today, but you know me, I'm, I'm a cultural Christian, of course, and grew up with a Christian type relatives and in an environment. Anything paranormal was associated with demons, demonic. Yeah. So if you see a ghost, there's a demon somewhere. That's just the way they think of things. Yeah. In the normal Christian world, there shouldn't be any paranormal shit. If something's paranormal, then something's wrong. And that's then demons. That's bad. Yeah. And that's demons doing that. Even though it clearly says in the New Testament that Jesus was doing paranormal shit and other people were casting out demons in Jesus' name. So Christianity is actually a paranormal, paranormal fucking cult. Paranormal um, exorcism cult, you know? And fucking even good spirits are possessing people. The Spirit of God la landed on Jesus after he got baptized by fucking John the Baptist. He and God down. says fucking. <laughs> this one is with me and then all of a sudden he can do miracles so there is some scripture would say that Christianity is a is an exorcism cult the demon can possess people and God can possess people which that's a big thing in the in early Christians they were worried well what happened did Jesus get possessed by 
God, and then he could do the fucking... Then he could do Then the he could do all this paranormal stuff? <laughs> or was he actually, you know what I mean? When did it happen? Or was he born as the angel of Jesus into this body? Was he physical or was he just a spiritual force? All that stuff is open to interpretation in the scriptures. And they in, they interpreted it in many different ways. Hence you know, why there are so many different denominations. Right. Jesus is saying, no, I'm real. You can touch me. See, I'm not a fucking ghost. Touch, I'm touch, physical. Touch, touch, touch. Yeah, but you are the angel of Jesus <laughs> born unto a woman. You know, fucking... And that all makes sense because there was a Jewish angel named Jesus spelled with, with a Z. And that's... He was an angel, an archangel above Gabriel. So it all starts making sense. You know, be like the Gabriel, it's like the angel Gabriel possessing the body of a woman. And he was one of God's best sons. And he, you can bypass judgment and old script, Old Testament law if you put your faith in Jesus and accept the blood that his blood sacrificed during the damn. Jewish blood magic ritual where they let the scapegoat go and the and the innocent lamb is slaughtered and the fucking blood washes away the sins of the tribe. It's the same thing as the blood of the innocent lamb Jesus. His blood saves every everyone a long time, you know, throughout time. It's the blood of a fucking de of a fucking demigod. And they let they let the evil goat, the scapegoat, they let him go, Barabbas. You know, Barabbas, wasn't it? Yeah, Barabbas. Yeah. And uh, he's, you know, the, the criminal. That's the fucking scapegoat ritual. You know, it happened on the Passover, if I remember correctly. Didn't it happen on the Passover? I don't know. If I, I, don't think, I don't think it's the Passover, but it's, um, yeah. So, it's just Christian thinking. And Christianity's been real inter- woven with possession and exorcism and evil spirits and sp spirits of the evil dead so Lorraine Warren and the demonologists and fucking War what's his name fucking um, what, what's Mr. Warren's name uh, Ed Ed yeah Ed's gonna come at it from that standpoint there's gonna be, gotta be a demon somewhere so just keep that in mind whenever you're dealing with Ed Warren Tom Sykes said the Warrens talked about a real-life haunted case where the occupants walked into the house and never came out, straight up disappeared. It was what? portrayed on that old school show, One Step Beyond. I kind of remember that, actually. We might have talked about because we did a show a long time ago that was like from the case files of the Warrens or something like that. Yeah. And I think I might have mentioned that on there, if I'm not mistaken. But that was like many years ago, so I'm not really sure. But Ed Warren never. What a great short story that would make. That's a great Ed idea. Warren would never even entertain any of the parapsychological explanations. Everything was demons, pretty much. Which that's a very foolish way of fucking interpreting what's going on. And I've seen this shit. It was it, the parapsychologists were closer to the truth, if you ask me. He also says, real shit, though, the Warrens probably helped a lot of people who had nowhere else to turn for help and for free. Yeah, I mean, I'll give them that. Yeah. I'll well, they made money off of it, just not off the people. Just not off the people themselves. Yeah. yeah. El Padrino said, uh, only demon was the nun principal that hit me with the paddle. I hated that sadistic fuck. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, Adriano Hammond, you both looking great. Thank you. Thanks. Have you seen the skull experiment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, on. we did a show about it a long time ago. That might be one that we need to revisit, I kind of right. feel like, because that was like years ago we did that. I remember I wrote, I read a whole book about it when I was a teenager. And even saw the little photographs and little scrolls of fucking paper that they would get and the photographs. I thought there was something to it. And that was after I saw the poltergeist. But looking at it now through the eyes of an adult and knowing what they did, I, I don't believe it. That's not the same. The That's not the same thing as um, what was it called when they when they decided they were gonna make a ghost? That was the Philip experiment, I think right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. See, that always kind of like fascinated me because yeah. I always wanted to see if that if that would work. Skull experiments was basically seances. Yeah, that's what, yeah. I think they faked all that, though. I pro I suspect that they probably did, yeah. too. But it's, it's been a long time since I've looked into all the details. Like I said, we did a show about it, but that was like years and years ago. Um, also, have you watched the doc on uh, the, Jesus, the Shroud of Turin? 
I've seen a lot of yeah. different documentaries about that. A lot of problems with the Shroud of, Shroud of Turin. A lot of problems with that. Yeah, I think it was made in the in the Middle Ages. It's not very old. I mean, it's old, but it's not as old as yeah. they say it is. And, uh, I think it was made in the 1400s or the 1300s. The image that's on it is not an image that would have been around a three-dimensional object. It was something that was two-dimensional painted on it. They showed the differences. It, it would have been if it was wrapped around a three-dimensional object. It would have been very fucking distorted. It was some kind of chemical burn, and it was done with a brush. I saw a thing one time where they did it. They almost did it like a bas relief, where it was just kind of like they had a kind of like a, a like a flattened statue of Jesus. Yeah. It was like partially three D, but it was kind of flat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, like, like Han Solo, like Han Solo and Carbonite. Yeah, like yeah. a stamp. And then you put the uh, fabric over that and like kind of did a rubbing, like you do a gravestone rubbing, and that like came like really close. Pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was there was a huge industry of selling fake. Um, holy relics to the Catholic Church in the Middle Ages. And they knew they were fake. They'd still buy them. Because they were like, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> followers, followers will like that. And they, we'll get them to come to church. Oh, boy. That. Another Jesus' is foreskin. Yeah. So <laughs> if you could come up with a cook up, a good fake, you could sell it to your local church. They loved it. They're like, yeah. Yeah, they didn't give a shit if it was no, fake. No, they didn't give a shit. They were like, this Any, Anything that brought people in. Yep. Anything that brought people in. Because that's what, you know, you didn't have anything else to do back then. Well, they were like, well, yeah, it's fake, but we're saving people's souls. Yeah, they, that's how they get, justified it. Right, so they, yeah. didn't get, they didn't give a crap if uh. it was real or not. Rumple foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> ben says, time travelers took the shroud back to the Middle Ages to confuse the faithful and spread atheism. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was just kind of like uh, when they buried all those dinosaur bones in there, too. Like, to, so the world is, uh, to fool us into the world being, like, yeah. older than 6,000 years. The ancient Greeks would dig up dinosaur bones and fucking go, yeah, these are griffins. You know, this is where a bunch of which that's not a, that's Amazon's not a dumb that's not a dumb thing to think. They found a fucking they found a giant tomb, and it was basically labeled to like a giant or a demigod, and it was the bones of an elephant, and they're arranged in the shape of a of a man because they didn't know what it was. They just found these bones. And they go, this must be a dude. And they put those bones in the shape of a man and go, there he is. We better give him a decent burial. So this is the way people thought. They didn't well, know that was an elephant. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. It's yeah. just like you can't blame them for not really knowing what the fuck that was. So yeah. it's like they dig something up and be like, what the fuck is this thing? Yeah. And they just kind of like put it in the context of like what they knew. So. It, was, it was like an ancient mammoth or something. Yeah. Which, like I said, they didn't know anything mm -hmm. about that. So you can't blame them. They're, they weren't stupid. They, were they thought like, it was a hero from old. They were working with what they had. You yeah, know? we better bury this bitch. This might be Hercules himself. <laughs> you know, that's the way they, they thought, you know? I mean, just to be on the safe side. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right, so where were we? Okay. So, uh, yeah, we got distracted by the demon. Okay, yeah. so, uh, yeah, three ghosts and a demon. So. Now, the demon... Now, this is kind of interesting. Ed Warren apparently said that the demon... Uh, had probably been dormant in the house for a long time, and then it was energized by the oncoming puberty of the two Smurl daughters. Okay, so he's talking about... So he's talking about poltergeist, poltergeist. activity. Because, like yeah. I said, you know, 95%, I don't know the exact percentage, but 95% of, like, poltergeist cases Involved are usually people. centered around puberty. And yeah. a lot of times it's girls, but not always. Yeah. Not always. So um, that's probably what they thought. But he's just framing it in a demonic, you know, kind of, uh, kind of framework. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, Ed and Lorraine, who, by the way, I'm pretty sure they wrote a book about this, which the TV movie was based on. They tried to exorcise the demons, doing the regular exorcism shit. You know, doing the praying, doing the holy water, the, you know, playing religious music in the house, trying to piss off the demon, I guess. Um, but as per usual, and we've seen on every episode of Haunting, uh, this just makes the demon mad. And at least they admit that it makes the demon mad. But I think in some ways it's kind of like, they're kind of like, oh yeah, all this stuff we're doing, it's making the demon mad. Whereas like in real life, if demons existed, they're probably like, I don't give a shit about that. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, apparently like while they were doing their, their thing, the Warrens and the Smurls, said that a bunch of like dresser drawers and there was like a mirror that was on the wall and they started like shaking 
uh, really violently, like when they were doing the prayers and all that. And uh, this is another thing that's a little bit hard to believe. But apparently a message spontaneously appeared on the mirror. And this message read, you filthy bastard, get out of this house. Not really sure if he was talking to Ed. Yeah, Warren, yeah, yeah, he talking to Ed. Or if he was talking to... Ed's the only filthy bastard around. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. Jack Smurl might have been a filthy bastard, too. We don't really know. Ed go in there and get a fucking little Debbie oatmeal pie. Oh, you got oatmeal pie. Yeah. That's not a snickerdoodle one. Mm-hmm. We're out of those. Things. Oh, the Snickerdoodle. Man, you ate that whole box. I think I had two. Wasn't that many I think animals. I had two of those. The Snickerdoodle ones, I think, are way better than the oatmeal pies. I know that's maybe sacrilegious to say, but the Snickerdoodle ones were delicious. Little Debbie has some new flavors. Get Snickerdoodle. Yeah, it's like an oatmeal pie, but it's got Snickerdoodle cookies instead of oatmeal cookies. Yeah. And the it's a little bit smaller, and like the the cream in the middle is thicker. They're super healthy, man. Just it's fucking all protein. <laughs> Or something. Low calorie. But for, for, for some definitions of protein. Thank you very much, Trey. Happy New Year. I have freaking COVID, so I'm in bed sort of listening. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope you get better soon. But thank you very much. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Tom Sykes says, get the hell out shows up on the fridge of the San Pedro haunting in alphabets. Yeah, that's right. So these are kind of like some uh, wordy poltergeists we're talking about here. So, um, yeah, so Ed, he's saying, yeah, the, the filthy bastard was uh, directed toward him, probably. Now, he was supposedly, he said in the book, that he got uh, choked by someone's hands, like invisible hands, and then started having, like, flu-like symptoms, which might have been just the flu, you know, that's because so, that, that's a thing that happened. The filthy bastard was a reference to Ed, his wife Lorraine, and their 15-year-old girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, maybe the demon knew about that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what he was saying. That's true. I don't think she was 15, though, was she? I don't remember. Pretty young. Yeah, they had like some... Uh, they, had kind of, they had kind of a weird thing going on. Yeah. They had kind a of weird threesome. <laughs> she was oh, young. My. Yeah. Well, she, she lived... was a biblical marriage. <laughs> That's probably how they thought about it, Hell too. Yeah. <laughs> That's from the Old Testament. Yeah. Well, because you, you know how, like, Ed Warren was just kind of like, well, it's yeah. in the Bible, so I'm allowed to do it. Yeah. And you're not allowed to bitch about it because you're just a woman, so shut the fuck yeah. up. Christians are always talking about we're going to have a fucking... What they talk? It's a Christian uh, marriage, Christian relationship, something like that. Yeah. Christian, ba- Christian marriage was between a man and a woman. And a woman. And a woman, and a woman, and a woman, <laughs> and, and, a, a woman and a teenage girl, and a teenage girl, and all, <laughs> and all the handmaidens of your women. Right. They all belong to the man. Yeah. Charlemagne had a shit ton of wives. Which I think uh, a lot of dudes would like to go back to that, actually. Yeah, it was like Islam. <laughs> you could have as many women as you could afford. Yeah. That's all it was. It's more natural. Not for me, it's not. <laughs> it's not natural. <laughs> Yeah, women were kind of evolved to be in harems. Most, 80% of women, yeah, yeah, of course. 80%, I'm gonna, okay. I got the data, 80% of the he's, women. Oh, he's going to prove it to you right now. I'll prove it to you shit right now. You should probably just like stop talking. 80% of the women are chasing after the same 20% of the men. I'll chase it after anybody. They'd rather share an alpha than to accept a beta. They'll just be single if they don't. So what ends up happening, especially if you look at real rich dudes, they got three or four fucking wives. Basically, they're just not only married to one, but they all got houses and they fucking, yeah, and the wives know. Because the wife ages out. She's like, yeah, I don't want to fuck you anymore. Just make sure the bills are paid. Go do your own thing. And then they're all doing that. That's what they do. Mango says, keep digging, Tom. Yeah, he will. Mm, uh, I know what it is I'm <laughs> talking will. about. No, no, no you don't, but okay. Of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. The, the, oh, it's that's right, right there. It's right there. That's right. Well, you don't I, represent you don't represent. I most forgot women. that Tom is always right about everything at you all times. You she can't. in no way let me tell you let me tell, tell y'all something. People. <laughs> tell you, people. Jenny in no way represents the average woman. In no way. She's not average in any way. She's her she's her own fucking little phenomenon. Average women <laughs> I'm my own phenomenon. Yeah, she's kinda, her own I phenomenon. I kinda like that. Yeah. A- average women would would rather, like I said, they'd rather share an alpha than to fucking be be with a beta. 
especially if they're real young. You know, when they get older, it's different. You know, they're women have changed in different, you know, over, over the years in there as they get Tom older. watches a bunch of bullshit on the Manosphere section of, like, YouTube. No, and, no, no. And thinks it's all true. A lot of it. <laughs> well, some, of it I, some of it I've been there. You know what I mean? I know exactly what they're talking about. Oh, and also he thinks everyone else's experience is the same as his experience. No, I don't think that at all. <laughs> the average guy never could, could never live like me. They don't. <laughs> the average guy's a lot more lonely than I am. Poor things. That's just the way it is. Like I said, 80% of the women are chasing the same top 20% of the dudes. They're lucky to get laid. They don't have girlfriends for the most part. They're mostly single most of the time. I was never single. Not unless I was in the army or off doing some other shit. So at times you were. At times I were. Yeah. But it was so, by choice. Okay. The average guy's kind of an incel. I don't know if I'd say that. Yeah. There's, oh, okay. That's, yeah. oh, I, I forgot you're right about everything. Yeah, it's so, true. Just okay. look at the statistics. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, all okay. right, no, women don't like the truth, man. They want to fucking change it out. It, it, it's most dudes fucking are, are not real... How did Active. we? Where was I? Thought They're we were not. talking about ghosts. Why yeah, are you, why okay, are you talking go, about go, this go. All right. bullshit? Okay, all right. This isn't Andrew Tate's show. Get go the ahead. fuck off, Andrew here. Tate. Andrew Tate, man. <laughs> That's that motherfucker Get the there. fuck off, that here. motherfucker there. He's fucking funny, that guy. And I, I like no, that he's guy. Not. Though. I like that guy. Of he's course funny. you do. I like him. He's funny, yeah. Of course you do, because he's a total douchebag. But I don't take everything he says seriously. But I like that he fucking trolls people. He, he's partially trolling. There is a lot of truth in what he's saying, but it's not the absolute truth. There is no absolute truth. Everything is kind of. Everything can be kind of uh, bent. Character and charisma can bend a lot of rules. That's, you, that's usually what, what you're seeing. That's what you're seeing. There's some dudes that can just, no, I, I'm going to do this, and it, it, it works. But that's part of nature. You're not violating nature when you do that. Ben says, actually, sexual frustration is supposed to be a factor in poltergeist activity. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. I kind Yeah, it's like if pretty much any kind of... Um, Actually, it's uh, this is kind of like a sideways thing, but I was because I was watching Hoarders last night. But I was kind of thinking that maybe, and you said this in regards to your shit as well, was that people that have uh, really, really strict upbringings or are either by their own personality or by you know a force imposed on them from outside are supposed to like suppress their emotions you know what i mean like if they grow up in a really strict household for example then uh then they will lash out in other ways and like you said i think in your case you said it was like poltergeist activity and i've seen some other things where that happened Whereas uh, I was watching a show on Hoarders last night where the woman had grown up in like a Jehovah's Witness and her dad was like super controlling and she wasn't allowed to do anything. So when she got to be an adult, she's like, well, I'm just going to buy shit because, you know, that's that was like the way her way of like taking over control of her life. And uh, and I said, and I know this is also weird, but this is um, that's kind of the same psychology as like some uh, like some eating disorders like anorexia, yeah. because when you feel like you don't have any control over your life, it has to come out somehow. So control has to come out somehow. So anorexics will, you know, they're like, well, I can control what I eat with what I put in my body, like how much I weigh. So it's kind of like all on a spectrum. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? <coughs> Tammy said, I read somewhere that the happiest women are single. I believe that. And the happiest men are married. The unhappiest women are married and the unhappiest men are single. Uh, yeah, I believe that. That lines up more with my own experience. Yeah, probably actually. true. That's why I never encourage men to get married do not get married don't do it stay safe if you want women to be happy don't marry her well if you She'll want turn women to, on you if you want women to be happy I've like just married. just don't uh yeah. don't pair up with them at all yeah. because women are much happier when they're single <laughs> if you run into women that think like that don't go out, don't go out with her don't go out with her <laughs> uh let's see where was i oh, okay <laughs> this is your fault, women. I know. Every, everything's yeah. our fault. We're used to it. Um, Jeffy Art said, neither of you are what I would call average, not by a fucking long shot. Yeah, I know. Zach says, you're both your own phenomenon. That's why we like you so much. <laughs> 
I never, Jenny projects. I never considered myself a phenomenon before. Jenny projects her her value system. I don't though. I'm very into the I'm, average person. I'm and very not like that. I'm very aware that other people I, are not like she me. She comes down to the fucking biker bar with me where the average people are, and she's like, "Oh my god, <laughs> fucking, I wasn't. That's like, who it is. <laughs> I wasn't like that. Kinda, what, are you, what are you talking kinda, about? Kinda though. I absolutely did not the do music, that. The music, the fashion sense. I absolutely like, did not okay. do that. All right. So I don't know what you were... I don't know if right. you interpreted some weird shit. Okay. Because the thing about it is that you have a... Uh, well, your problem is that you have, like, a, a very rigid way that you think everything works, and so you fit everything into that, even if when it's nothing to do with that. Because you've told me many times, it's like, oh, you think this and that. I'm like, no, I literally have never thought that ever, but okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I didn't think that at all. Okay. I'm just saying it's not really my scene. Like I said, I grew up in Daytona, so I'm really familiar with that kind of stuff, and it's like I'm just not really into it. It's very much like it is in Mississippi. I'm That's not what that, I mean. I'm not it's that like, much into it either. You know. You know what I mean? But I, I know what it is. Okay. I, I, and I know, I know how they are. They're not like us. Not in the way that they do things. That doesn't necessarily well, yeah. mean that it's bad. I grew up around people yeah. that were not like yeah. me, so I'm very... A lot of my family's like that. I'm very, very aware. <laughs> I was yeah. very aware from a very young age that yeah. most people were not like me. So right. I would never in a million years think that other people were like me. That's the last thing I would think. Right. You know what I mean? Because yep. I'm very aware that they're not. So I, I don't assume that kind of thing. I don't assume anything about anything. About anybody. Because okay. I don't know. I don't know you. You know All what right. I mean? Okay. So I'm just saying. All right. Um, <laughs> Zach says, as frustrating as it can be, it's stuff like that why I thank God for making me queer. <laughs> Who said that? Zach did. <laughs> And then Victor says Tom is projecting his projection. Yeah, he does. No. That. He does that. No, he does that. No, I'm just letting Jenny off the hook. Okay, right. right whatever. The, whatever. Whatever. Not well, gee, thank right. you. But Zach, Zach, uh, I'll fucking get on you about the gays too. They got the average gays. I don't even like the average gays. They're as bad as the average straight people. All right, fucking. I got friends that are cool gays, and they don't like. They don't like that. They don't like average gays. All right. And fucking, we start. First of all, the fashion sense is fucking crazy. Okay. Uh, just, I, I could get, I could get Toby in here and he'll go off for hours, you know, he's old leather daddy. He'll, he'll talk, he'll talk for hours about average gays. He says they're, they're trying to be straight people. They're like, they're, <laughs> it's just, it's just funny to hear him talk about it, but I understand what he's talking about. Tammy said, is there going to be a new t-shirt featuring the new channel logo? Yeah, eventually we're going to make one. Yeah, we're going to I mean, one. I specifically made the new logo so it would be easier yeah, to, to, shoot, uh, to, to shoot. shoot the thing because, yeah. And I'll do it in that color if I can get that color. Green? I do like green that. On black. I do like that green. Yeah, I'd get it on I, I could do Well, it the thing about it, though, is that if you're going to screen print it, then you usually have to do a layer of white and then a layer of green over it because if you just do a layer of green on the shirt, then it doesn't show up as bright. It'll be a little darker. Yeah, because I've one. I'll try because I've done it before with red ink and it doesn't really show up no. all that good. You the, have to put a layer of white underneath. That neon green might work though. I don't know. It depends. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll do. I'll do an experimental one. Yeah, you'd have to get one that was. Like, I can't kinda, do c a two color because if, it's too it, hard. It, it, yeah, too we, hard. I don't well, have we we don't have the machine to like set up. Board. We you know to right. do the uh, to line it up and everything like that. So um, all right. So where were we? So Ed had the flu, and yeah. he blamed it on the demons. <laughs> That's where we were. So, uh, so the Warrens, after they left, I guess like all the haunting shit, like kind of calmed down after a little while. But then a little while later, they got like way, way worse. And this is the point where Jack Smurl said that he was repeatedly raped by a succubus, which they showed in the movie, and it was like the most hilarious scene in there. Uh, and he said that the succubus appeared to him. As a scaly old woman, not a man dressed as a woman, as in the movie, but a scaly old woman with red eyes and green gums, mm. which is very specific. Not green teeth. I just, just green gums. I, green gums. So what color were the teeth then? Probably white, I guess. How would you notice that the gums were green? I may... feel like I wouldn't even notice what color people's gums were. You're reading too much into it. I mean, that's what he saw. That's my deal. It was you his, know that. his image. It was his image. It was, it was, it was, Green it was, gums. He made it up. So that's, 
That's what I mean. <laughs> well, up, we'll see. So. He, in a way, that's even weirder. Like, if he yeah. made it up, because I'm like, why would you make up something like that? Like, that weird specific detail. Because you would think it's like, oh, you know, oh, the red eyes, that's, you know, everybody's got that. But you know what I mean? Like, all, all the scary shit. Yeah, they well, have red eyes or black I'm, eyes. I've but had green dr- gums? I've had dreams where a char- that's bizarre. I've had, I've had dreams where a character in a dream came at me and I know, picked out a little detail on that character and it was fucking weird. Like, you know, okay, green, I'm looking at some dude and he's talking to me and I look at his gums, his gums are green. And I remember that. You know what I mean? It's like, that's, probably, that's what he's talking Tammy about. Tammy said maybe she didn't have any teeth. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. See, I didn't even think of that because I'm stupid. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, maybe that's what it was. So yeah, you would notice it more like if the gums yeah. were green and she didn't have any teeth. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, but we're trying to like make a show out of it. <laughs> I'm not worried about. I know, it. I, I don't know, think it happened. I know you want to talk about, about your your, no. your theories See, look about. At, look at look at her look at her. I know you'd rather talk no. about your theories of like uh, gender or whatever, but it's like we're not doing a show about it had that. Nothing to do with gender. You can do your own uh, it had show. Nothing to do with gender. You can do your own channel about See, that kind of what, shit. This is what I put up. <laughs> I put up. It had nothing to do with gender. I don't I don't I don't need to hear your theories about Wish that. Wish I had kind some of eggs, crap. man. What? I'm hungry. I want some eggs. Dude, we're only we're okay. not even through the okay. first case. All you right. just keep like talking about bullshit, and I can't okay. even get I'm through. Not talking the about shit. bullshit. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Zach says, "Imagine what the guy described riding you with some giant maniacal smile, right? It's like that, yeah." So, um, red eyes and green gums is succubus. Uh, also, Janet said, uh, "Not to be outdone, I guess." She's like, "Oh yeah, um, demon also raped me as well, but hers was like a dark figure, and that." she could hear pig noises coming from behind the walls while it was going on. Which, see, that's, I mean, you know. There's some people that would pay for that. Yeah, that does seem yeah, like, that's a, almost like a sexual Again, that's fetish. a very, sec, yeah, that's that's a like very a specific fetish. sexual fetish. Yeah. I kind of feel like there was another case where they said that they were actually raped by pigs. Yeah. Or like pig people. Like two-legged pigs. You know what I mean? Like upright pigs. Was that this case and I'm just like having like an exaggerated I don't I don't, know. I don't remember. I thought there was another one where there was like pigs involved. These are people that don't do not I know I mean I know Amityville Horror had like the whole Jody situation, but that's not yeah. what I'm thinking about. I'm talking about I'm talking about pigs raping people. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to picture that. I mean these are not people that do not come from a farm or a background. <laughs> a pig is I just don't picture a pig being a kind of like a sexually sexually uh uh fucking foreboding fucking threatening creature <laughs> yeah pig. here comes a pig i don't know man yeah, you pig. see a pig coming at you with a pig. big old pig. what are they, what do they call it? that's it, not a pizzle it's that's not a even a, it's not even a dick i mean it's like a, <laughs> a pig basically kind of like a pig male pig you're talking about something about six inches seven inches long that's a big old like the big around is a damn straw and fucking um, shaped like a corkscrew, and it's prehensile. It, it fucking finds the <laughs> we. Yeah, it finds the female and goes in. And this looks like a tentacle off of a fucking. And probably like inside a human, like they wouldn't even notice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wouldn't even notice. That's like a tentacle off of a fucking. It's like, uh, eh, what's that? Off it's like an octopus or a some centipede shit. Like, like, it. like went they're, up they're, there. they're reading into the shit. Maybe they fucking seen a fucking a horse. You know what I mean? Or you know, a big old fucking stallion walking in. You know what I mean? And. See now, that bitch is see now, demon you. horse. Yeah, it looks Why like. Why did that happen more? That's what I'm saying because you know, fucking. Because that now that would be scary. Growing up around horses, I mean, the anatomy is very similar, just giant size. You know what I mean? And fucking, I'd walk around a fucking stud, breeding studs. You know, which they have not been gelded. And those motherfuckers are. St- Impressive. There, no man could ever compete with that. That's why the ancients were always saying, "Well, yeah, when Zeus comes down, he's gonna fucking be like a bull or a horse and fucking have sex with women." That's what they're talking about. Um, very impressive. You know, if you're a size queen, it's not. Then that's the way you're gonna go. If you're, but this pig thing, pig pigs aren't working with much. Fucking, I've seen pr- pig breeding. You know, uh, it's no. You know, so a demon, if a demon was going to come get you, it would come at you like the size of a fuck. It would be a horse. But see, maybe it's a demon pig, so it's yeah. like a pig. So it's got like a, a man dick on it or something. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Right. We're not talking about, like, real shit here. Right, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. 
And this one, like I said, it wasn't even. She just said that she heard pig noises, like coming from, because her her one was like it was just a dark figure that she saw. You know what I mean? I've always wondered what it was. You know, my mom being a trainer and everything, and we've noticed that all these young teenage girls just so interested in these damn horses. I never, I never. It was always kind of. And then, as soon as they're old enough to date guys, all of a sudden they don't want to ride anymore. They don't want. They're not interested in horses anymore. It makes you wonder what they're. What kind of psychology was going on about getting on top of this big muscular fucking beast and riding it? See, I always wondered if there was some shit. That, the My Little Pony thing might have had a different. I don't. I don't know. Victor uh, says I'm not in that business anymore. Victor said maybe she just scissored with a pig. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, the scissor with the pig. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> you could just cuddle with the pig. Pigs are really smart. Too bad they're delicious also. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? So, uh, so, yeah. So all of this crazy shit is going on, clearly. So the Smurls said that they went to the Roman Catholic Church to get an exorcism, but the church was just like, nah, we, we don't want to get involved in that situation. So the Warrens got their go-to guy, Father McKenna. He's a dude that's... I've, he's been on a haunting, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I've seen him before. He hangs out with the Warrens all the time. So they got him to come to the house and do the rites himself, like, without the backing. This was an illegal exorcism. I don't think he went, like, whole hog with the exorcism. You can't really do that. Oh, God, will kick your ass or something. But he just, like, went there and did what he could do, like, without the church, right? So McKenna goes there, he does one exorcism, and of course it doesn't work the first time. And uh, everything got worse, as usually happens. So the next person to come in uh, to see if they could get to the bottom of this was another medium, Mary Alice Rinkman. Uh, she came in and also said, oh yeah, there's four entities in here. I'm sure probably the Warrens like, you know, filled her in ahead of time. And she's like, yeah, and one of them's a demon, just like the Warrens said, because they're always right. So she said that two of the other ones were actually, like, dead people. She said one was a murderer named Patrick who had been killed by a lynch mob. Because, like I said, you always need some kind of murder or true crime going on in the house or otherwise it's boring. You don't want boring ghosts. You have to have interesting ghosts. And the other was an old woman, which is what the Warren said, too. And this old woman's name was Abigail. And Rinkman apparently didn't uh, know who the fourth entity was. So Father McKenna comes back in and does a second exorcism, uh, which also didn't do Jack. Uh, and then after this point, it got so bad that the Smurl said that like shit started happening at other locations, like weird paranormal, like uh, poltergeist kind of shit would happen like at Jack's workplace. And also, um, and they, I think they showed this in the movie, The Haunted, too. Like, when they went on vacation, like, they went to this campground or something, and, like, some weird shit happened, like, some weird phantom wind-type crap and, like, you know, stuff moving around on its own. And it happened, like, when they were on vacation, too. Like, it was following them. So, at this point, they don't really know what else to do. So, they decide that they're going to go to the press. I think they were kind of hoping that they would be able to shame the Catholic Church into helping them because prior to this, like the Catholic Church, they don't want to help them out. So they said, maybe if we go to the press and make a stink about it, then maybe they'll come and like do something to help us. Now, what ended up happening with that though, and this is another thing they portrayed in the movie, is that, you know, uh, they probably got a lot more attention than they bargained for and that they actually wanted because now they have like a bunch of weirdos like uh, sleeping in front of their house, like camping on their front lawn. Uh, they have newspaper people, like, hanging out in front of their house all the time. They can't leave the house without, like, getting asked questions and shit like that. So, you know what I mean. Um, now, after this, again, uh, the demon activity or the poltergeist activity, whatever you want to call it, got, like, way, way worse. Now, on the night that Jack actually, like, went and told the media about it, uh, Janet said that she w got picked up and choked and thrown against the wall like uh you know just by an invisible person or whatever uh and jack claimed oh see this is what i was thinking of jack claimed that he was raped again but this time by a creature that looked like a pig on two legs hmm. so that's what i was thinking of so he was raped by a pig man pig man pig man yeah man <laughs> can you imagine like tom's imagining it 
Yeah, I'm going. You imagine Victor's in there saying raped by a pig man. Yeah, Vic- <laughs> the Jack Smurl story. Vic- Victor, Victor's in there saying he's gay, but he doesn't have any gay friends. The same thing, but and fucking we were talking, and I'm just going like this. This fucking raped by a pig man thing that'd make a good gay porn film. Yeah, you don't think there's already one? We gotta look for it. All right. Rule thirty four. Yeah, that that make that make a good porn film. We do some, and it would be kind of like. Um, it sounds like a Chuck Tingle book. Yeah, well, raped by a pig. Man. I think I think I would I think I would do it kind of Greek. You know what I'm talking about? You'd have satyrs. Raped and, by a pig man in my own butt. Yeah, you'd have like <laughs> satyrs. You have like Pan out there with his flutes and his fucking horns and shit, fucking having his way with these dudes. And then fucking the pig man comes up and tries to beat fucking Pan's high score, and starts going after these other dudes. Fucking, I'll get I'll get I'll get fucking uh, I'll get Victor to write it. We'll write up. <laughs> we'll write up a whole screenplay. I got a friend that's in porn. We'll make a fucking porn film. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I made a friend. I made a friend on local porn around here. <laughs> Amy Quinn's husband. All right, you gotta look her up. Fucking Quinn Studios. <laughs> They said if if they told me if I ever wanted to shoot a scene, fucking just fucking hit them up, fucking they got work for me. They don't pay though. See, Jenny get mad. What? At it's me. volunteer porn? No, you know, say they don't pay much. Oh, they, you know. They, oh, I thought you said they didn't pay at no, all. No, I was no, like, I'm, pay, not doing, I'm not doing porn for free. They they pay, but I'm like, that's <laughs> not damn. much. That's barely worth driving over there. You know, like, <laughs> Seventy five bucks. You know, that's what they pay, dude. Think of that. Seventy-five bucks. I guess that would add up if you went uh, every. Well, but yeah, just, but how often do they make movies though? Like maybe once a month for they oh, we'll might see. Be able to give you something. No, they might give you a job once a month. You can't. Make, I mean, it'd be like, different if it was yeah. like every day. Yeah, like no, if they no, had no. a these scene are little, for you these every are little, day. These are little. That's local, what I mean. Then little, that might be kind of worth it. But these, these are little local studios of just really regular looking people that make because you know they don't need these big companies to market anything anymore they sell that shit on fucking like mini vids and fucking mini vids is the one that they do a lot of that shit on where you can sell your porn ben says this is what happens when you put demons into pigs pig man rapists yep yeah see that's what happens yeah victor said oh he's coming victor is coming up with a chuck tingle okay yeah uh, garcia raped up. raped by a pig man on flag day in a starbucks in my butt yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it yep that's about right While my other butt's watching <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then your butt's watching too. And then there's a butt inside of a butt. <laughs> and that butt is also watching that butt. That butt is in that butt watching the other butt. <laughs> jerking off to the butt. One butt jerking off to the other butt. My own butt jerking off to the butt. I'm trying to imagine. I'm trying to imagine how, how you a can go. A butt jerking off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've, my, my, okay. I've said this before, but Chuck Tingle is a fucking yeah. genius. Yeah, <laughs> one of my one of, one of my drug dealers, my steroid drug dealers, was a <laughs> was a uh, was a muscle gay porn star. He could come up with some shit like that. He could come up with some shit like that. It's fucking crazy, bitch. <laughs> Actually, Jenny I, never met him. Jenny, never, I showed her pictures of him. I showed you pictures of him, didn't I? I don't know. You show me pictures okay. of people all the time. Yeah. I don't remember who they are. He's a gay porn star. But he's got a girlfriend. He's gay for pay. Just for pay. You know, well, they'll, well so I'm, he claims. So he claims. Well, I thought but that I don't the, think it's possible. I thought the men in gay porn made more than men in straight porn. Oh, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. that gives you an incentive yeah. right there. Yeah, but he's he, uh, but like he sells his own shit. You know what I mean? Like he's another one. He's mini. Because straight men in porn don't, don't make, make all, any don't, money. They don't make, they don't make all make that much money. money. Well, because there's not much demand, and it's like that's yeah. you know. His girlfriend is a bodybuilder too, but she's evidently not in any of that shit. He was, you know, yeah, yeah, fucking. He, he's all right though. I don't think he's straight. I don't think straight dude could do what he's doing. I think it's I think it's his cover story. Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, like I, I said, pe- people's uh, people's sexualities are very yeah. uh, nebulous. He's, well, you know? he, he's like, well, dude, I, I was like, well, uh, what did your girlfriend think about you, dude, this and that, this and that? Goes, does she know about that? And she goes, oh, yeah, she knows, but, you know, I'm not gay or anything. You know, I'm not, you know, it's just, well, well you know, it, it's just, well, you're bisexual, though. And he's like, no, I'm not bisexual. I'm straight. 
And I'm saying, but dude, look, what are you talking about? Look at what you're doing. And he's like, dude, it's not like love or anything. I'm not kissing these dudes. <laughs> like what? what? What the fuck are you talking about? You worry too what, what much. You worry too much about like what other people are doing with their genitalia. We sh- he showed me. He showed you his genitalia. No, he showed me a video. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he showed me a video. A little I'm clip. Just, I'm a little just saying. Clip. You and I was too just like, dude, look what you doing? What are you talking about, man? And he's like, and he's like, fucking, oh no, man, fucking, you know, I'm you straight. Wor- you and worry too like, much no, about like I labeling. Like, people. No, I don't think so, man. No. I don't, I don't really so. give a crap what you do. It's like so. I don't, you know what I mean. I, I don't really think I don't. I don't like labels, man. Yeah, I don't like it. Well, I just no. I'm gonna say it's that's just not, it's too not it's too rigid. I think the dude's bisexual. I don't think there's a problem with it, but you know, he's just saying he's straight. Yeah, I'm but it's saying, like why so. why does it matter? No. Like if like no. what you call him, why it mattered to him? Why does it matter? It mattered to him. I'm just saying it shouldn't matter. It mattered to him. It doesn't make any difference. Okay. Keep telling yourself that. No, I'm just saying. It's, it doesn't make any difference what you call it. It's just, like, silly to, like... It's silly to, like, put words on everything. It's yeah, just okay. kind of... You know what I mean? I'm just not like that. Well, that doesn't mean other I'm, people aren't. Yeah, but... Uh, I don't care what, they, what they're what they like. I just know what I'm like. That's all that matters. All, all that matters is... I only care about my own views of it. I don't really care what Well, yeah, I'm, I'm very aware all of right. that. <laughs> That that's the only <laughs> thing he cares about. And yeah, I'm just yeah. straight up. And, you know, I'm and not, he'll admit it. I'm, not, I'm straight up. Like, no, I give a fuck what you think. <laughs> yeah, he only cares about himself. Mm-hmm. He just said it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I said, I already. Know I got that. my own rules. I already know that. Uh, Tom Sykes says in the Paranormal Activity Next of Kin film, which I haven't seen actually. I've seen the first one, but I haven't seen the other ones. One of the characters comments on how good the female pig's butt looked. Wait a minute, and what? asked the Amish dude if they all looked that good. What? <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to have to watch that movie now just for What that. movie was that? Paranormal Activity Next of Kin. Okay. Wait, which one is that? Like, how many Paranormal Activity movies are there? Does anybody know? Lit- I've literally only seen the first one. I know there's a fuck ton, but I don't, I don't know how many there are. <laughs> That's funny. Tom Sykes also says Jack and Janet Smurl looked like brother and sister, kind of. They, uh, they did a bit. <laughs> Well, I'll, hold on. Let's back up. What did the Amish guy say? <laughs> yeah, what is he going to have to like, finish uh, yeah, that you, scene you just left me hanging there. <laughs> what did the Amish guy say? Did he say, no, they all look that good? Or no, she, that one's exceptionally good? Or what, how do you answer that question? Uh, unless he came It's just back. like, what a, what a funny thing to like have occur to you. <laughs> like you just see a pig it. and you're like, I man, look at the ass on I'm, that. Yeah, look at the ass. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> Porky got back. <laughs> fucking funny you know you people are fucking terrible shame on y'all <laughs> don't be ashamed it's funny <laughs> <laughs> uh mega says next of kin was the last one yeah but what number is that though like i don't even i don't even know i'm sure it went in all kind of like crazy directions the first one was pretty good but I haven't seen any of the other ones because I was like, oh, the first one was good, but I didn't really feel the need to like see any of the other ones. You know what I mean? So, you know. So, yeah, pig on two legs. That's that's where we got distracted. (laughs) So uh, Jack shows up on a local television show. I don't know. I kind of feel like because weren't the Smurls on like some daytime talk shows talking about the pig raping? I, I thought remember. they were on, it was, I don't know if it was Donahue or, I think, I kind of feel like Donahue might have been a little too classy for that, but, I mean, you know, unless I'm remembering it wrong, but I'm pretty sure I saw these, these two on a daytime talk show of some stripe. Maybe it was Sally Jesse Raphael, yeah. maybe it was Geraldo, no, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Geraldo. I wanted to say it was Donahue, but I don't think, it, I don't think Donahue would be had, like, he's like, we're not doing pig rape, okay? This is a serious fucking show. <laughs> you know? I don't know. So he shows up on TV. Donahue's wasn't a serious show, though. No, I'm just saying that... Don, Donahue pretended to be serious. Well, yeah, that, that, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. It's like he would have had... It's like we need to have some semblance of, like, you yeah. know... That was fucking funny. Of decorum on this show, so we can't do, like, yeah, I got raped by a pig, man. Yeah, but he would do some shit like that. It's just that he would try to reword that fucking... It's some fun, but really, when you looked at Donahue... I haven't, I haven't seen it was, time, He so. was exactly the same as fucking old... Uh, what's his name? Fucking Jerry Springer. It was the same. Just that the way he handled it was... I remember they all ended up, in the end, being exactly the same. 
Well, yeah, because everybody watched Jerry Springer. Because, yeah, and they all ended up being like Jerry because Springer. Because everybody's like, hey, everybody on here is the worst. Let's yeah. watch. <laughs> it was fake. That, all that shit's fake, though, people. It was, it was fake. It's all yeah. fake. It was fake, yeah. yeah. We well, know, yeah, like we all those people. somebody peop- who was on that shit. Well, all those people, like, um, you know, they'd have it's like, hey, it's a mother and daughter, and they're both like banging the same guy, like, yeah. for money, and he buys us $5 million mm-hmm. houses and all this other kind of stuff. It's like, those are just actors. Or people that are willing to tell or the Or people stroke. that just yeah. are willing to, they're like, hey, you yeah. want to do this and, like, get in a fight and everything like that? Yeah. We'll give you, like, $300 or whatever it was. Yeah. They're like, okay. We'll fly you down your headphones. Evidently, a lot of it had to do with being flown to this area yeah. the studio. And they put you I mean, in a hotel shit, I'm not gonna, and, free, if they, and yeah. feed you and give you free booze and then have a party with you. And then give me three hundred dollars on top of that just to come on TV yeah. and like yeah. have some bullshit about how yeah. like I have a fetish about what something. Yeah, and they'd evidently yeah, film I'd a do. bunch of them at once. I so do that. They'd film a bunch of them at once, so you'd have like the the cast from like seven or eight shows all at once in the same hotel right next to each other. They'd all be partying and shit. That's really what it was about. Yeah, it was before social media. That was kind of, I would say that was almost kind of like the beginnings of social media. I mean, people didn't have anything better to do. It was like reality TVs, if that's what they wanted to call it. It wasn't real, but. Well, like I said, yeah. They were either actors or they were just people willing to, like, go on and be trash. And 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 act a fool. For money. For money, yeah. They'd be like, yeah, we don't have any shame. Come on. (laughs) They were looking for strippers, any kind of, any kind of two-bit entertainer. Like, one of our friends was one of those. Fucking, he was with the big wings and shit. Jacob. Yeah. He looked like the devil. And he was doing that shit in Central America. He'd been on all their fucking. My boyfriend is a Satanist, and he was the Satanist. And yeah. my boyfriend is a fucking. Even though it's like, hilarious because yeah, he's like the, the nicest, yeah, nicest you know. guy in the world. Yeah. <laughs> fucking funny, but he looked freaky as shit. <laughs> and he made a whole living just going on these damn talk shows for a while. Yeah, and like and like posing is different. Like posing is different things every time. Yeah, because you know how they would do. Like they'd have the talk show, and they'd be yeah. like. Oh, you know, my my daughter is marrying a Satanist, and then yeah. they'd have like the guy come out, and then everybody in the audience would be like, "Ooh, Ooh yeah, this is Catholic <laughs> country, and it's shame." All, it's all Spanish speaking, you know, all Spanish speaking. Oh, fucking hilarious! Yeah, fucking Jacob Angel's his name. Yeah, he's still around. He's still, he's still around. He, he still does stuff. Yeah, he did. He did her tattoo. He's a tattoo artist. Yeah, he did this tattoo. Yeah, actually. but he was also suspension. He'd fucking put the. Stakes to himself. He married a friend of ours, Aurora. They were married for a little while, but he'd do all, he, he taught her suspension. They'd do all this fucking suspension acts, and he'd make a bunch of money in Colombia, where he came from. But he would do all those talk shows, Colombia, Venezuela, fucking Chile, Peru. He could go all over fucking Central and South America doing talk shows, pretending to be fucking somebody's boyfriend or somebody's fucking husband, or, and he looked like the devil. Just... He looked fantastic. Skitty. Fangs. Bald head. He didn't have horns installed, did he? Um I thought he had I thought he had the, he had the little spikes. spikes. He had spikes up, like uh, inserted. Head. Yeah. Um He had it. them put like sub uh, what do they yeah. call that? Subdermal? Yeah. Where they put like the screw underneath and you yeah. can screw different things. I mean, like, Gene Simmons head. looked like a pussy. He had these fucking fantastic huge boots, huge devil wings, and uh, he could fucking Stick spikes through himself and hooks and fucking. Does he have a split tongue as well? Yeah, I think he did. I thought he had a split and tongue. And he was a ex military guy. He was a, a trained infantry sniper from the Colombian Army. And his brother was a commissioned officer who was being accused of a big old fucking massacre that happened. It was real famous in Colombia where he, uh, he ordered a bunch of people to be fucking basically killed in this big fucking firefight. He, nothing happened to his brother, but it, it was justified. But he was, his brother was real famous for that. But he was a Colombian sniper. When you look at him, you think he was just some fucking crazy freakazoid. But he was real disciplined, real military, real right wing. You know, he wasn't wishy-washy. He was fucking real. He was a good dude. I liked him. But he just couldn't make it in the United States. It was He had to go back to Central America where he could make money. Make money. He wasn't shocking enough for here, I guess. There's a lot of guys like that here. That's true. Yeah. Tom Sykes says back to the Smurls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know. <laughs> Eventually. Sorry. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> we still got two more cases to get through. Jim. Damn. So, it's well, going to be a long show. Well, yeah, that's what uh, that's right. what I was telling you. Uh, so, yeah. So, Jack shows up on the TV. I don't remember what show it was. I remember seeing it, but I don't remember what show it was. So that eventually did work uh, in their goal of shaming the church into investigating the case. So finally, 
uh, the diocese in Scranton gave their blessing to a third exorcism. So this was the one that was backed by the church. They had done freelance exorcisms before that. But this third one, uh, the church had, they had the backing of the church on this one. So Father McKenna does the third one. Now, uh, it appeared that this time, I guess because the church was behind it, uh, it worked because the paranormal activity reportedly stopped after this exorcism. However, only three months later, Jack actually came out and said that he saw a shadowy figure in the house that beckoned to him. So, you know. Uh, and they said that all the like foul smells and all that kind of stuff and the violent poltergeist activity started up again, like three months later. So at that point, they're just like, fuck this shit. And they moved away. They moved back to Wilkes Bar where they were from originally. And apparently they didn't have any more uh, disturbances at their new house. So it didn't follow them. Now they did do a fourth exorcism at the old house, which the Chase Street house in, uh, in West Pittston in 1988 and that seemed to have halted uh the activity there as far as i know like nothing else there has been reported somebody else bought the duplex after that um i don't know who lives there now but in the 80s or like not too long after they did the fourth exorcism somebody named deborah owens bought it and she said that she hadn't witnessed anything weird in there at all and she didn't really know what everybody was talking about and please get off my lawn it was just kind of that kind of thing um, so, you know, uh, as I mentioned, the Warrens wrote a book called The Haunted. Actually, no, the Warrens didn't write it. It was written by, um, a newspaper reporter named Robert Curran. And that was actually published in 1986, but it was like kind of about the Warrens, uh, you know, involvement in it and stuff like that. Uh, the book didn't really get great reviews, gonna say. Uh, they said it was very poorly written and that the story was a little bit unbelievable, which, yeah, raped by a pig man. That's, that's a little bit out there. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we did talk about the movie that was made from it. It was made in, uh, it was actually made for TV and it was broadcast in 1991 and it's just called The Haunted. And actually the movie's pretty good. As long as you're not like, it sticks to the, you know, the, the broad outlines of their story. It's as long as you watch it, like not really thinking that it's real, <laughs> then you might enjoy it because like I said, it's, some of their claims were a little bit out there, but you know what I mean? It's still a decent movie though. Like it had to like some good actors in it. I, I really, I liked it anyway. And it's kind of free on, um, I think it's free on YouTube or it was, I think that's where we watched it, but that was like, uh, you know, a while back. So let's talk about the San Pedro case, which is uh, sometimes called the Jackie Hernandez case because that's the name of the woman that was like at the center of it. Like I said, this is kind of similar. This is what really so similar to the Doris Bither case, which if you don't know was uh, the case that the entity was based on from 1982, that I sometimes get them like confused with each other because the details are so similar, but they're two completely different cases. So yeah, so we're talking about the San Pedro case now. Or actually, before we do that, let me run to the bathroom. Why don't you go ahead and play the commercials? Well, oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's commercial time anyway. Hold on, hold on. Okay. So all right, I'm gonna play a couple of commercials. I'm gonna run to the bathroom, and then we'll be right back in just a minute. Of their own, and died each in the 
despairing posture of his fall, and the light of the ebony clock went out in that of the last of the gang, and the flames of the triplex expired, and darkness and decay, and the red death held a limitable dominion over all. That's enough of that. Uh, sorry, I was laughing at Jeffy Art's comment, raped by a pig man until the Warrens came. Now please get off my lawn, the Jack Smurl story. <laughs> I would totally read that book as well. Tom went to get me another drink. There you go. Thank you very much. There we go. Now we're gonna talk about the San Pedro case. This should be good because there's not, uh, you know, spoiler alert, not as much pig rape in this one, uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish we had some pig rape, the Tom Ross story. So <laughs> that's like another shirt. But uh, but yeah, there, there's some other weird shit going on in this one. This one was actually, um, I don't know. I always kind of like really liked this case because man, some weird shit went on in this one. And I feel like it's not as well known as like maybe some other ones. Do you kind of feel like that? Which one? The San Pedro case. I don't like, remember ja which one Jackie Hernandez. Uh, sounds familiar. Okay. I got a fucking, uh, which yep. one was that? You know the you know the one with the attic and the guy with the picture the very famous picture of the guy with the attic that got pulled up into the you know what I'm talking about you'll know what I'm talking about okay you'll know what I'm talking about you know all about this case you're talking about the the guy that went up in the attic yeah I just and said fought and fought the poltergeist stuff in there yeah where you I yeah. saw a guy yeah okay well I don't know if he saw well I don't know if he saw a guy but he got like pulled up to the ceiling like by a rope yeah this is actually a good case this is the uh, the same guy that I, uh, Taft. Taft. Yeah, Taft. Yeah, Taft. Just, Taft investigated this. Yeah, one. it's not not Taft like the fat okay. president. Taft with two Fs. Okay. Taft like the fat president. Right. <laughs> ben it's says pretty good, just with uh, just with T in it. Yeah, we're having. Well, we were having boozy Arnold Palmer's. The thing is that when it but, had me worried about this is that this has that artificial sweetener in there. And sometimes artificial sweetener breaks down under the, in the presence of alcohol and it gets bitter. But it seems to be holding I together. I have never noticed that ever in my whole entire I've life. I've noticed it. Yeah. I haven't. Okay. Although I will I will admit that different artificial sweeteners taste different to me. I, when like, you start I'm putting not a, alcohol with them, it fucking fucks up that artificial sweetener. Like, for example, like for a while we had Splenda, and I was putting that in the coffee, and that tasted funny to me. But then yeah. I bought Sweet and Low, and that tasted normal. I like them all, but they're okay. Actually, out of them all, I like saccharin, which is that's the one everybody hates. But I like I like saccharin. But I don't think I've had any saccharin for a really long time. 
<laughs> Tom Sykes said, uh, a haunting TV show did an episode similar to this case with activity in the attic and someone being hung or some shit like that. Yeah, they did, didn't they? And what was it called? Um, what, wasn't there one called Monster in the Attic or that was just called The Attic or something like that oh, on okay. a haunting? We haven't talked the about attic, that. I think. I think it was just called. I the think attic. it was just called the attic. We yeah. haven't done that. Episode. I think we watched it recently, but we I don't need to think see. We need to do a show. We on should that. probably do a show on that. Yeah. Zach says, "Aren't some of the artificial sweeteners worse for you than actual sugar?" No. I don't know. No. I kind of feel like maybe they might be, but I don't really know. I don't. I don't really think it makes uh, that much no. of a difference, to be honest with you. Well, you don't live long enough for any of that shit to fucking take effect. They used to think that sacrum would give you cancer. There's no. There's. They were injecting so much of that shit into my city. You, you I mean, yeah. I mean, you'd care. really, really have to, like, have a lot of it, like, before you'd have to be worried It was the same that. with MSG. They would come out and say that fucking monosodium, sodium, mono, monosodium glutamate. 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 <laughs> Listen, I got her fucking, she's my, she's in here, she's trying to be my, 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 uh, fucking crutch for speaking. I don't know how to speak. I'm not that drunk. Yeah, monosodium but. Monosodium glutamate. Yeah, but MSG. You said, you said it wrong a bunch of times, though. I had to fuck. So I was fixing it. This is why I don't say anything when I get drunk. <laughs> she gets like this. Okay. Because I'm going to fix it. MSG fucking had, they would say, oh, it would give you a headache, it would give you cancer, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, you end up going to the Chinese restaurant, no MSG. You know, they're fucking, we don't use MSG. MSG was a fucking Japanese made flavor enhancer that they put in things. And they still use it today. They've had no problem with MSG. But here, they people thought it was something bad. MSG is fucking delicious. It's, you can get it in a salt shaker if you know if, if it markets to have everything. It'll make it, everything taste better. Shake a little bit of MSG in it, in the recipe. And it just brightens everything. It tastes really good. I like it. It was good in Chinese food, too. Just don't believe what you hear. There was nothing wrong with MSG. It was similar to salt. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a flavor enhancer. Yeah. It's a flavor enhancer. It's all wood. If you so, can't enha- if you don't want to enhance some with MSG, just put a little bit of fucking lemon juice in anything. And and lemon juice enhances everything. Especially vegetables. Excuse me, excuse me. Fruit. Fruit with sugar. Like, you're making fucking strawberry shortcake. You put the damn, cook some sugar and some strawberries together and put a little bit of lemon and taste it you go oh that's okay put a little bit of lemon in it and then taste it you go oh yeah that's really good that's another flavor enhancer that's what MSG was like that just it was just dry okay Jim I'm right I'm done Tom Sykes said the attic episode was the one with a dead junkie in the basement and the daughter reconciles with her father yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah we did yeah, watch that one recently yeah, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. actually like a pretty good that's episode that's pretty good I think that was one of the ones that we watched we watched like two or three of them in a row like deciding which one to do and that wasn't the one we decided on but I don't think we ever did a show on that Victor says MSG made me gay yeah yeah MSG will make you gay now yeah, I will yeah. say that back in the '90s, when I was eating a lot of ramen noodles, because I was like really poor. Well, I'm still really poor, but when I was even poorer than I am now, um, and I had migraines like all the time, and I didn't know why. And then I said something to my mom, and she's like, "Oh, well, maybe it's because you eat all those ramen noodles, and there's like MSG in there." But I don't know if that's what was causing it. But I don't really have um, migraines anymore or headaches. So it was MSG was rumored to cause headaches in Caucasians. It didn't, yeah. it didn't have that effect in Japanese people. Well, well that's, I don't think it, it maybe, maybe there's a chance. Maybe. I mean, I had bad, bad migraines and it's yeah. like, I, I very, very rarely have headaches. Rarely anymore. Chemist looked at it and said, this is basically modified salt. It shouldn't fucking. Right. But I mean, some it. people might still have, everybody's different. So some yeah. people might have different sensitivities right. to it than others or allergies or something like that. Maybe I had some kind of allergy to it. I don't know. I haven't had problems since then, but I'm just yeah. saying I was eating a lot of ramen noodles at that time because, like I said, I was broke. Mm-hmm. So, and I had and I had migraines like pretty much every day, which I don't have anymore and haven't for many years. Because the thing about it now is when I I still eat ramen noodles, but I don't use the packet. You know, yeah. after I stopped using the packet, I stopped yeah. having migraines. Okay, I've but that's I realized that that is that's anecdotal evidence. I, uh, anecdotal I've been giving evidence. you the packets. Have you? Yeah. Packets in it with creamer and cream and cheese and yeah. Maybe I got cheese. maybe I got over it or maybe it was something else causing it. Yeah, no, because I've been giving you the packets when I give you ramen. Because I don't know what was causing it back then. That's not that I'm not having it now. I remember eating MSG as a little kid and just fucking loving it. Just 
I might have had a headache, but maybe you get over it. You might get it, you know what I mean? If I, can, I don't remember it, you know. I don't remember having headaches every time I eat MSG. That was back in the 70s, man. MSG well, that's what was I mean. king you know, in the 70s. Uh, maybe everybody's walking around with migraines all the time. You just got used to it. Could be that a lot of the shit that you're eating has MSG in it and they don't say anything. Well, that's it's just, it. I mean, that's kind of true of everything. Right. Like, there's always, a lot of things have MSG in it that mm -hmm. you don't know have MSG in it. Yeah. Just like a lot of things have sugar in it, a lot of things have different things in it. Insect they, particles. Well, yeah. But Anything that, red is made out of a damn fucking beetle carapace. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's okay, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? It won't hurt you. <laughs> it won't hurt you. Yeah. Tom Sykes says, Spices always affect Caucasian people, which makes me think Christopher Columbus was a lie that white people were searching for spices. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. I don't have problems with, like, a lot of spices, but for some reason I did have a lot of migraines back when I was eating a lot of ramen noodles. With There's a lot of stereotypes that fucking white people don't like things that are hot and shit. I fucking love hot. Well, food. I think that's more a Midwestern that's Midwest stereotype up north, yeah. than, uh, than an American stereotype. Right. When they're eating fucking Scandinavian-based foods, like fucking eating Flemish food and Danish food. It's like fucking at the smorgasbord where there's no spices at but all. But that's like old people. It's old though. people. They're all dead, I think. I used to remember. I remember being a kid where they were fucking. You'd run into fucking people that would just fucking put black pepper on something. And go, oh, it's so hot. Oh, and I'm like, what? Or even like paprika. What? And I'm like, yeah. paprika. Yeah. Paprika is not hot at but all. But looking back on it, they were like my grandparents' age. Yeah. Back then. They, so couldn't, they couldn't handle it. They couldn't. They, they didn't have spices because they were poor. They weren't used to that. Well, and that they was came like... came out of cans. That was like that. ethnic food. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think that's what it is. They were eat. They ate... They lived out of cans, eating canned food, and there was very little spice. So everything kind of tasted like a, it, a can. <laughs> yeah, and anything that was like had any kind of flavor to it was just overwhelming to them you know because they were they came from poverty which is hilarious to me i did i did remember seeing one thing where somebody was talking about how spicy something was that just had like a little bit of paprika on it i was yeah. like dude i can't even like taste paprika <laughs> yeah i mean paprika is good but it's like it's not spicy it doesn't really no, spicy it's tonight. just um be, uh, red bell pepper um turned into baked and turned into powder that's all it is now i mean the thing about it is that like i don't like super super Roasted. spicy food like, I don't want, you know, the inside of my mouth to be numb, so I can't even taste the shit. But, you know, I don't want to endure my food. Yeah. But, so I don't like super spicy stuff either, but I like a little bit. I like it hot. I like it spicy, everything. Indian food, Mexican food, I like all that. It's got to have flavor to it, to me. Victor said, my old boss sent back a chicken fried steak because she said the pepper and the breading was too spicy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're thinking, like, black pepper is too spicy. Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, unless the thing is coated with black pepper, that's okay, yeah. but... You know, just a little bit of pepper. I don't. I don't see like that's not that's not anything. All right, so let's finally talk about this because we still have two more yeah. cases and we're gonna be fucking. You know, we're already at two hours, <clears throat> so we need to get the show on the road. So okay, so this happened in the late 1980s, like 1988. So you got Jackie Hernandez, and she seems even though she was older. Then, uh, you know, quite a bit older than your classic poltergeist focus, I guess. But she kind of had uh, a lot of the things going on that would normally make you a poltergeist focus. You know what I mean? Um, she just had a really, really bad uh, divorce, a really bad breakup from her husband. Uh, she was she had a two year old son and was pregnant with another baby. And she was you know, broke. Like, so she was in a really bad like financial situation. Uh, so she ends up moving into this really little house in San Pedro, California, which I think is still there, if I'm not mistaken. You know, kind of hoping to get her life back together or whatever. Now, um, shortly after moving into this house, though, she starts hearing weird noises up in the attic. Um, she said that it sounded like people were, like, talking and moving around up there. She also saw some object movement, like she would see pencils. Uh, she specifically said she saw a bunch of pencils like shooting out of a pencil holder, like by themselves. Um, you know, just, you know, cans of soda, stuff like that, like flying across the room. Um, she had a bed uh, fall apart, like for no reason. Uh, she also said that she saw a glowing cloud that she said tried to suffocate her. So there was that, which is kind of like your blue mist thing that you saw 
And um, this was kind of a big deal, too. She said her and her friend said that they also saw this weird, like, thick substance coming out of the kitchen wall. Like, it was just this kind of, like, weird, thick... It kind of looked like, when I saw the reenactments, it kind of looked like, I don't know, like, corn syrup or something like that. Like, it looked like... didn't look like blood or nothing that I remember. It kind of looked more like corn syrup or, like, motor oil or something like that. Um, and they also found, like, some unexplained puddles, which, again, that's another kind of, like, poltergeisty kind of thing, where they leave, like, puddles of things everywhere. So her baby is born, and not too long after that, Jackie starts having the same nightmare over and over. In this nightmare, she took on the identity of a young guy who was being murdered near San Pedro Harbor. And right around this time also, she started seeing uh, a, like an apparition of like an old guy in the house. She said she would see him like he was either sitting at the dining room table or he was sitting on the edge of her son's bed. And she said she saw him on multiple occasions, like a scary old man. Now, eventually, um, Jackie had this neighbor who was also a friend of hers named Susan Castaneda. And I guess Susan Castaneda, like, somehow knew Dr. Barry Taff. Um, like I said, who was also, like, a researcher on the Doris Bither case, which was uh, the basis of the entity. So in August of 1989, Dr. Taff shows up to the San Pedro house to see what's going on. So he comes there with two photographers, Barry Conrad and Jeff Wheatcraft were their names. So they go into this little bitty house... Um, and the first thing that Dr. Taft said he noticed was there was a really, really bad smell in the house, like rotting flesh. Again, very, very common with this kind of thing. Yeah, I gotta say something, though. Okay, what are you gonna say? I was in a conversation with, 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 with Barry, uh, online. He said part of the smell wasn't, part of the smell was, at, with, with, or at least part of it came from the fact that this woman fucking didn't throw garbage out her fucking that place was filthy was yeah they did say that they i because i think that he said when he first went in there like he was trying to be diplomatic but he's yeah. like yeah i kind of feel like this should yeah, this probably place, be condemned yeah place fucking <laughs> almost like a almost like a hoarder house like she, it was a shithole yeah. She, yeah she wouldn't throw garbage away or anything which yeah so that might have been the pungent stage yeah. i don't think that had anything to do with like paranormal stuff um that might have just been because she was like you said i don't know if she was I don't know if they, uh, if I'd call it a hoarder, because I have seen, like, video of this situation. And it doesn't look like a hoarder, but it's not like a... It was a tiny little house, um, and it kind of looked like she didn't really, like, clean it or anything. And she was a loon. She was a lunatic. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. He said she was mentally not there. Which, I mean, you could read that both ways. If you want to think that, like, poltergeist and shit like that are real, then you could say, well, maybe that was, like, encouraging it. Yeah, or she created it. Or, she, well, yeah, that's what maybe. I'm saying. But he said she was a lunatic. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. I don't doubt it. Yeah. I think, well, you know what's weird? It's, I think the same thing happened in the Doris Bither case. Like, when he went over to that house, I think that house was kind of like a shithole, too. Yeah. I don't think it was as bad as this one, but... You know. She was mentally disorganized. Yeah. Under a lot of pressure. Pressure and stress, too. Which, you know, I get it. I yeah. mean, she has a two-year-old kid yeah. and a baby. Yeah. And doesn't she's have nice. any money. Right. It's just like, you know, that's a very, very stressful situation right. to be in. I can't imagine. So, um, yeah. So they come in, and it's kind of like, like I said, a little bit of a shithole. So Dr. Taft starts questioning Jackie, and while he's in the process of doing that, um, they all heard a really loud bang coming from the attic, and then, like, another louder bang uh, coming from the same place. Now, they were like, hey, what was that? Jackie says, oh, that's... Um, she said that banging noise is caused by a floating severed head... Uh, that she'd seen up there on several occasions prior to the arrival of Dr. Taff. That's creepy. So the severed head is floating around up in the attic, like banging into the walls, apparently. Or it, the head floats around and makes things fucking move. 
Although it's funnier to me thinking about yeah, yeah, the boom, head boom, just boom, going boom. boom. Yeah. Whoops. Maybe maybe the head is nearsighted. I think she just saw a disembodied face up there and heard a bunch of noise. That's, That's pretty weird opinion. thinking that there's like a disembodied head floating around in your yeah. fucking attic. I don't like that. Not one bit. But if they put that in the movie, everybody would laugh. I know this case. I think this case did happen. I'm not. I'm, I'm making fun of it, but I think it did happen. We make fun of everything. That's kind yeah. of our thing. Yeah. Even if even if we like it. Yeah. El Pedrano said, "Was this from the movie The Entity?" Yes. Um. No. It's not. No. No. Yeah. This is the one about the woman. I'm no. Getting, it's getting... no. It's not. Okay. Look, she's getting mad at me again. No, it's not. Okay. I told you. Yeah, but because I've said it multiple times, I said it's the same. Do, it's the same parapsychologist, but this is a different case. That okay. was that was Doris Bither. This is Jackie Hernandez. Oh, I thought we were talking about Doris Bither. No, we okay. did a show about Doris okay. Bither a long time okay. ago. All right, okay. I thought we were talking about. No, Doris I said Jackie. Okay, Hernandez. so then I got to back up. The smell thing was attributed to fucking Doris Bither, the one from the Entity case. Yeah. All right. So I don't. He said that she didn't clean her house. That it was fucking filled with garbage. Did she said this one was filled with garbage too? No. Okay. Then okay. Then 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 my comments. I was talking about Doris Bitter. Oh, okay. Well, see, now I'm confused because okay. it's like I thought you were talking about this case. No, and you're well, not. I thought I thought this, I thought we were talking about Doris Bitter. No, I told you multiple times. Because Doris Bitter also had anyway. some shit happening up in the attic from the Entity case. I mean, they are similar, but I thought that's what we were talking about. Didn't that was no. the one where the fucking they went up there to take pictures and the damn uh, electrical cord went around dude's neck? No, that's this case. Then I'm, then I'm conflating two different cases. Yeah, you two are. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's this case. That's okay. not the entity. Okay. I don't even think Doris Bether had an attic in her house, unless okay. I'm remembering it wrong. All right. Okay. I don't remember any attic. I'm atti- conflating two cases. I don't remember any attic shit happening. Okay. Yeah, and Tom Sykes said this case is very similar. Like, yeah, it okay. is, but, you know, I'm just saying. That's not. <laughs> don't listen to her. Don't listen to don't me. Don't listen to her. Why? Why don't listen to me? You're the, you're the one. I'm that, just trying to. You're the one that fucked it up. <laughs> you're the one that's confused. So yeah, it's alcohol, just Flo- booze. Yeah, it's obviously. Yeah. So yeah, floating severed head banging into the walls. Yeah. Causing some banging, which, like I said, is kind of funny. But then, like, if that was really happening to you, it wouldn't be funny at all. I feel like because that's like pretty creepy. So, um, on this first visit, actually, Doctor Taff went into the kitchen. And took some samples of the weird fluid that was uh, oozing out the walls. And he was actually, he said that he was there when some more of the liquid like seeped out like from, uh, from the, by the kitchen cabinets. So he did say that he saw it. So I guess it wasn't fake or if it was, it, they did a really good job of it. Now they analyzed, this is weird. So they analyzed this substance. And they found out, allegedly, that it was blood plasma. Yeah, I remember that part. Belonging to a man. Hmm. Now, Jackie said she had no idea where it could have come from. Like I said, I don't know if this is true or not. Is this the same case where they got the pictures of the little orbs and little balls fucking down at the fucking foot? Uh, I don't the know. Carpet about- meets the floor. I thought that was Doris Bither, but I know it was. I know it was. It was Taft's case. Like I said, I got two of them. So do you know yeah, this because is the one where they had the, the they were taking pictures of little light balls? Was it this one? Um, maybe. No, I don't. I don't really we'll remember. See. Uh, Tom Sykes said the the Bither case had spirit rape, and this one didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Doris Bither said she got raped by what three different or or there was like two that would hold her down, and then like the other one would rape yeah. her. That was a door. That was Doris Bither. I don't think any of that went on with Jackie Hernandez though. But yeah, so uh, blood plasma seeping out of your kitchen walls that's a little bit weird so allegedly i don't know that's that's just what it says so they were there for the rest of the afternoon and like nothing happened like for the rest of the afternoon but then like after it got dark jeff and barry the two photographers who were on the team they decide they're gonna go up in the attic um and they're gonna take a couple more pictures up there so while they were up there um Jeff said that his camera got snatched out of his hands and like flung across the room and then something that he couldn't see like shoved him. And he also said that he got like, uh, you know, 
that he was like really really like freaked out by this but i guess that was like the last thing that happened that particular night but like worse shit happened like later on so for the next couple weeks because the the team were not staying there they just kind of came there to investigate and they said yeah that's like some weird shit like you know call us if something else happens so for a couple of weeks like nothing happened like they didn't hear from her like from jackie hernandez but then on september 4th and i believe this is still 1988 barry conrad the photographer he gets uh, a phone call from her and she says you need to come out here like right now because the shit is getting like really really bad and it's like unlivable so barry calls jeff the other photographer and called another researcher that was on the team whose name was gary and then all three of them like went to san pedro with all of their equipment now once they get there um they said that they saw and maybe this is what you were thinking of they said they saw like these weird like balls of light and yeah. they were floating through the rooms and going through the walls yeah now um like in the entity case you remember the entity case where they took the pictures of like the of the light arcs and all that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. um they said similar to that they weren't as dramatic as the case as the pictures from that case but they did get some of the some of them on film like i said it's not as dramatic as the bither ones but they did still get some of the orbs and like weird lights and stuff so after they did that jeff was like we should go back to up to the attic because that seemed to be where like where a lot of the activity was going on so jeff and gary um go up to the attic and they were just kind of like taking pictures around like not taking pictures of anything in particular just kind of taking pictures of whatever and so nothing was really happening so they're like well i guess we'll just go back downstairs but while they're about to go back downstairs jeff um apparently like he just kind of like sucked in his breath like oh my god like that now the attic was like really really dark but gary turned around and just like took a picture like he couldn't see what he was taking a picture of but he just did it like instinctively so this is the very very famous picture that shows jeff it looks like he's hanging from a nail on a ceiling rafter, like by his neck. Like he's way yeah. up in the air. Like his, he the picture, his yeah. head is like that. It's a very, very famous picture, like in paranormal circles. Yeah, evidently it was just a big disturbance and dude took a picture real quick and that's what he caught. But yeah, he because he couldn't really see. Yeah, and he wasn't up there for long, evidently. And the, and the dude said he didn't even know what happened. He said it was over before he knew it. I mean, it's that's an interesting a photograph. Could it have been fake? Yeah. Yeah, they but could have faked they it. Could sure. have faked it, but that's the photo they got. You yeah. said it happened. So a couple minutes later, um, you know, Jeff got down and he went downstairs, and he said, like from his experience, he's like, I was only a couple of steps behind Gary, um, and we were kind of starting to come down from the attic, but that in the darkness, like they couldn't really see. He said that he felt like a noose had been thrown around his neck and he'd been forcefully yanked back and then upwards. Yeah. Um, now, when he got... Thank you, Aaron E. Gonna catch the show tomorrow to make my work day better, but want to stop by and say Happy New Year. Thank happy you, New Year to you, and thank, thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoy it tomorrow. We went off on all kind of crazy tangents. Yeah. So it was like... So you've got <laughs> something to look forward to. <laughs> it's, it's super fun. So, uh, so yeah, so they look at his neck when they get down there and he still apparently had some clothesline or something like that, like tied around his neck. And he had like all these red marks, like where the rope had like yanked it. You know what I mean? Um, and after that, like probably not surprisingly, Jeff was like, yeah, not going back there. I don't think I'm going to go back to that house. No, thank you. Uh, so he never went back, <laughs> which, you know, you can't blame the guy. So after this incident, um the phenomena kind of seemed to chill out a little bit now jackie said that she still saw the weird lights or orbs or whatever uh she said she still heard like banging sounds and like weird voices or mumbling from the attic from time to time and uh still smelled that horrible smell that smelled like rotting meat or whatever but it wasn't quite at the level that it had been prior to that now a few months later jackie and her ex-husband kind of got back together and she moved back in with him and this was about 300 miles away from the house where she'd been living in san pedro so for a while while all that was going on um obviously she reported no paranormal activity because i guess everything was fine 
But, um, you know, this is her ex-husband for a reason. Uh, so they weren't together all that long before shit started going sideways once again. And, uh, you know, they broke up again. So the paranormal shit starts happening again. Now, at the house that she was sharing with her then, with her ex-husband, um, she started hearing banging noises coming from a shed in the backyard. And also, her and the neighbors said that they saw the same apparition of the old guy that had been at the San Pedro house um, showing up on a TV screen in this house. Wait a minute, hold on. And what? that was 300 miles away. They saw who appear? It was the old man, the apparition. Remember I yeah. said about it? Yeah. No, you don't remember. No. The old, ma- the old man that was sitting at the dining room table or okay. on the yeah. on the son's bed yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that, they saw him on TV? Yeah. In a house 300 miles away. Hmm. So they saw him in a reflection on an... Allegedly. On a, on a TV that was turned off or the TV that was I'm on? I'm not really sure. Him. What are they talking about? I assumed that it was that they saw him in a TV that was off, like a reflection of him. A reflection of him, okay. That's what I assumed, but I could be wrong about that. Because, yeah, you're right, that is an ambiguous thing. Yeah, I don't know exactly what you're saying. It's like, what, was he showing up on TV, like, reading the fucking weather, or what? Yeah, you know. (laughs) Inside the cathode ray tube, along with the fucking, uh, you know, fucking all the other dudes from Videodrome, or whatever fucking, you know, that was. What what are we talking about? He's like, hey, I'm the ghost, I followed you, what's up? yeah. (laughs) <laughs> because there's been other cases where they see somebody in the reflection of an old for you guys that are too that young, happens a lot on a haunting yeah, for actually you, for you guys that are too young to know what a real television looked like the old television was a damn glass like a blown glass ball you know basically it was real shiny when it was off you could get a reflection out of it almost like a mirror like a black mirror that's kind of cool or a gray mirror really well black mirror is a, it's a yeah. TV show so, but you can't you can't do that with these new fucking screens you have today. But back in those days, you could get a reflection of something in a room, in it, off of it. So I didn't know if that's what they were talking about, based on what you said. They must be. I wasn't sure it. either because everything just kind of says they saw him on a TV screen. I'm like, well, yeah, that could mean a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, not like it matters all that much, but I'm just saying yeah. that it's still like kind of weird. <laughs> Tom Sykes said, too bad there's not a San Pedro haunting movie. I'm actually surprised they haven't made a movie about this. I've seen, like, a couple documentaries about it, but I don't think they've made, like, a fictional movie about it. But it's weird because it would be a good... The entity had a lot of fucking nudity in it, see? So that's why they made that movie. Well, yeah, they're like, ghost rape? Oh, my God, sign us up. You see the titties are fucking moving like that. Now, I'm going to say I like the movie The Entity. It's good, but but the end of that is ridiculous. Yeah, and it's kind of based on what somebody said that they were trying. It's not based on what actually happened. No, it's not based on what happened. It's based on what was said. They were talking about maybe we should catch this thing, and And they're gonna freeze it. Yeah, so they go okay. In in this movie, we are gonna catch this thing. Ghost sickles, and we're gonna freeze it. Yeah, because that'll work. All I could think of was like little ghost popsicles. I loved it when I was a kid, though. I was like, I, I still st- love I still that like, movie. Yeah, like okay, but yeah. like I said, the end of it's ridiculous. we're gonna catch this ghost. The we're gonna fucking ridiculous. freeze it in liquid nitrogen. Yeah, and where are these paranormal psycho investigators got a fucking whole laboratory with liquid. Fucking, well, didn't they build? Wait they a minute, build a, they built a whole they capture. Did, well, they didn't they build inside the laboratory? It's been a while since I've seen the movie. But didn't they build inside the laboratory like a whole fake house? Like yeah, like a mock up of, of her house. bedroom to lure her, the the, the rapey in. ghosts there yeah. so they could get him and they're like, Boo bitch, we're yeah. now we're gonna freeze you. Yeah, it had a fantasy ending. Which is a ridiculous concept. It looked good on t- on screen though. It's, it's cool ridiculous. Idea. Yeah, that's right. The scientists will fix it. <laughs> the scientists will fix this with all their endless money. Sure. That yeah, like, American thinking. Like man. you'd really get a grant to do that yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> you would not. Well, I had to compete against fucking Close Encounters of the Third Kind and all the yeah. other shit that was going on. I mean, you'd think ghost rape would be enough for, for yeah. to get people to watch yeah. it. We yeah. don't need frozen ghosts. Too. All of science is taking this seriously. They pulled in their money to make a whole ghost capture fucking underground cave with fucking... It looked like it was in an underground fucking bunker. To be honest, I'm going to say... 
that the that the whatever technology that that they came up with in Ghostbusters, yeah. like the stuff that just like sucked the proton packs, yeah, proton, where you sucked yeah. them into the trap, was a lot more believable, right? Than and freezing freezing it. ghosts with li- liquid nitrogen. Yeah, that is an outlandish proposition. That's all they could come up with. I mean, I'm talking like it's like you know the proton. Maybe that works. I don't know. The proton pack. (laughs) The proton pack is a better idea. Ghosts, one weakness. (laughs) Yeah. Liquid nitrogen. Sucks it in and closes up. See that to me, that makes a lot more sense. Then you got it on the end of a wire, and it looks all heavy duty. It's got emergency. And then they put it in the bigger storage facility. Yellow emergency. And then the storage facility eventually busts, like a like a nuclear meltdown. Yeah. You know, so it it has like um. I mean, that has kind of, like, equivalents in real life. So it kind of, like, makes... Like I said, you put them all in a... Because they put them all in the storage facility, and then the storage facility started to leak, essentially, or, like, blew up. And that's what released all the ghosts, right? So, like I said, like a nuclear meltdown. So we have, like, a real-life equivalent of that. So it was a lot more believable. I just don't really get... I don't know who came up with the idea of, like, let's have frozen ghosts at the end. I wouldn't worry about it. They, they I'm not made, worried they about it. I'm just shit, wondering. They made that shit up on the, at the drop of a hat. How do we catch a ghost? We just free, you freeze it. You freeze it. You freeze. That's, oh. that's 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 50s thinking. And they were all sitting around like smoking a doobie. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's 1950. Yeah, thing. that'll work. Yeah, and then it busts out of the ice. Boom. Explodes. But I mean, I mean, that movie came out in 1978, though. I think. Yeah, but the dudes that wrote that came out of the 50s. Probably. That's, that's like true. some shit. Yeah, like like the blob. frozen frozen ghost. You freeze it like the blob. Maybe that's what they were thinking. Yeah. They were thinking of the blob. Yeah. But like I said, it makes sense more with the blob because the blob is like a thing. It's like a yeah. it's a it's a corporeal. These motherfuckers that can't think outside the fucking. Normal it's like a, it's like a big continuum. jujube or They're like jello. They're not thinking or outside this normal space time continuum. They're thinking about an object. See, ghost must be an object or it wouldn't be real. And you know, then on, on Ghostbusters, they're gonna take it a little bit fucking further. They're gonna say because that was eighty. Well, so they're gonna go well. Um, it doesn't have to be solid to be real, okay? Because magnetism is real, so there's an electromagnetic field that's real, and you can't see it, okay? You can't hold. Which, it. like I said, that makes more sense. So to me because it's use, all of the same. Yeah. It's you know. So it's we're going to use same. an electromagnetic field to sure. catch the ghost. That makes okay? more sense. Amount of protons, whatever a proton is. That's what they're saying. And then atomic shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll yeah. work. We'll just suck it in there. Yeah, yeah. That's, it'll have lightning See, bolts. See, I buy that. Lightning more bolts than, and wind. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I know it's not real. I'm just right. saying I buy that more. I'm right. just like, all right, I, right. I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah, electromagnetism. Frozen ghosts, I'm not allowing that. Atomic electromagnetism can, can, can capture the ghost. That's what they're saying. Because all I could think of, like at the end, because the, the, the thing about the entity was that the movie was like so, it was so good and like so serious like up to then, yeah. and then I was just like at the end of it, it's like all I could imagine. Yeah, I do want you know, that movie. Do you, do you know what I imagined? I want that movie now. Do you know what I imagined? What was that? Do you know um, you know when you used to go to the ice cream truck, and yeah. they had the the ice cream bars that kind of looked like Mickey Mouse's head, except like yeah. if he was melting. Yeah. From, yeah, or if he had some it's disease, poorly, poorly or done Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> like they were kind of like scary looking. Yeah, that's Still what like I them. thought. I thought of like a ghost yeah. on the end of like a stick, like that's an ice fine. cream. Stick. Yeah. That's what I thought of. Okay. And I'm like, that's probably not the association that you want with your serious horror movie. Just no. saying. Ghostbusters. But it's a good movie otherwise. Ghostbusters had it better. You catch it inside an electromagnetic field, and now you got it in a basically a metal shoebox that has a wire on it. And then you can stuff that into a mainframe and download them in there. Just like a fucking computer cartridge for your video game. Yeah, see, that makes... And now he's in there. Yeah. He's in there now, electromagnetically. He's because it's information. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That makes a lot more it sense It made more to sense me. to the mind of the 80s person. Too. Right. You're like, okay, That's what I'm yeah, saying. That's why work. people that, bought that. That'll That's work. why people yeah. bought that. Yeah. Honestly, I saw they just added Ghostbusters on... Was it HBO Max? It was some like streaming service that I have, and I was like, "Oh my god, I kind of want to watch." Even though I've seen that movie so many times, I've like memorized it. Ghostbusters is so fucking great. That's actually one of my favorite comedies of all time. I think I saw that in the theater. It's a good movie. It's still fun. It's still funny. Part two is good. Yeah, I, I there actually was a part three, but I don't think I remember it. Um, wasn't there a part three or uh, just two? I think no, just two. I don't think they made a part three. Two. They did a remake, but. Or not? No, it wasn't a remake. They it did like, an all-girl remake, and then they well, did no, a then they one. did one like more recently that was Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah, that had like all be, people say it was okay. It's pretty good. I actually kind of wanted to see it. Yeah. 
um, you know, the trailers looked all right, and they yeah. had like a lot of the, you know, a lot of the original guys are dead, you know, yeah. sadly, but you know what I mean. But I liked the idea of doing that. They didn't revive that. They didn't revive that franchise in time. See. Yeah, it was they're like dumb. it was they too late. Dumb. At that they should have done that. They should they should have brought those guys back in the nineties and that would be well, while they all still looked well they all still look about the okay, same okay while well, they were all still alive for one thing they were thing. all alive I mean, and they would have been know. fit enough to do you should, fucking they, they should have had that shit in ninety one or ninety two and you have a fucking badass fucking Ghostbusters flick well they were probably thinking about it but you know they were like, thinking that they were doing other shit, shit. happens yeah. shit happens you know what I mean? right yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Jeff Yard said, so they captured ghosts to make good humor Pac-Man popsicles. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I thought of. Like I said, it's probably not the association that you want, but, um, yeah. So, um, so Jackie and her husband, yeah, they get back together. We got distracted by, uh, the old man appearing on the TV screen. We were trying to decide <laughs> if it was just a reflection or if he was actually on TV. So, um, so she calls, uh, the team back. And says, hey, uh, you know, paranormal shit is also happening here at this house that I'm at now, 300 miles away. So the two, like, Barry Taft didn't go. But the two other guys on the team, uh, Jeff and Barry, they went to the new house to kind of see what was going on. Now, they said that as soon as they got to the new house, their equipment started going crazy. Like, it was just turning off and on randomly and, like, breaking and shit like that. So they decide they're going to set up a seance because why not so they put down the ouija board they do all that stuff which like i said that's always a mistake and they start asking questions of whatever this entity was so this entity supposedly said that it was an 18 year old man who had been murdered near san pedro harbor in 1930 and they asked him, it's like, hey, why did you fuck with Jeff, like, trying to hang him or whatever the fuck it was you did? Uh, the guy on the Ouija board, the ghost, said, oh, well, Jeff looked like the guy who killed me. Yeah. So I was, like, trying to get back at him. I'm yeah. like, I think some people are, like, pushing the planchette, just saying. Like, trying to get that fucking answer. Sounds that like bullshit like. to me. Yeah, that does sound like bullshit. So, now, at this point, apparently, during the seance, Jeff, again... Uh, gets thrown against the wall and was knocked out. So the ghost really hates Jeff, is what I'm saying. He really does not like Jeff. Now, Jeff wakes up and he says that he felt like he was being strangled, and then the ghost threw him against the wall again, because the ghost is a giant douche. So <laughs> they, they were like, okay, well that's enough seance for today. Uh, so they just like stopped it and uh, never continued because like I said it's always a bad idea now Jackie did some research on her own and later discovered that the body of a man named Herman Hendrickson was indeed found floating in San Pedro Harbor in 1930 although the man was actually 28 not 18 uh, at the time that he died and also, uh, at the time that he died, uh, his death had been ruled an accidental drowning, not suspected as a murder. Doesn't mean it wasn't a murder. It just well, means, suspected. It means that they didn't suspect that it was a murder, that he probably died from drowning. I mean, it was 1930. What the fuck did they know? Nothing. Now, uh, Jackie also said that the old guy that she said that she had seen in the San Pedro house and also on the TV in the new house was she figured out that it was the spirit of the builder of the house who was a guy named john damon i don't know she said that the reason she came to this conclusion which again sounds a little bit like bullshit was that she had once followed one of the mysterious you know the mysterious balls of light she was seeing all the yeah. time that she followed one of those into a cemetery and the ball of light hovered over that guy's grave and that's how she figured it out hmm. i thought it was going to be like on a haunting where they were like looking through some old records and like, Oh my God, that's the ghost. I saw like a picture of an old dude from zone, but I don't think that was the case. I think she was just like, Oh, I followed a light and it hovered over a grave. And so, yeah. Um, so Dr. Barry Taff, he, um, did not think that, uh, whatever Jackie's problems were, <laughs> were caused by ghosts as in spirits of the dead. Just as in the entity case, he seemed to believe that it was poltergeist activity. He thought that because of Jackie's uh, very unstable mental state and her high state of stress at the time, 
had kind of caused her to become a poltergeist focus, wittingly or unwitt unwittingly. Um, you know, she'd just been through a really bad divorce. Uh, you know, she was very poor. She had two very young children. She was under a lot of stress. Um, you know, and she maybe wasn't all that together. I don't really know. Um, Dr. Taff also seemed to think that Jackie had a bit of a crush on Barry, one of the photographers, and was unconsciously attacking Jeff, the other photographer, because she thought that he was in the way of her getting the other man. Hmm. I don't know if that's true or not, but Taft thought that was his perception, or at least that's what I read, that, this, that that's what his perception was. So that's kind of like what he was thinking. He's like, maybe that's why the entity or whatever it was, like attacked Jeff specifically, like all the time because of her, like she was mad at him. And that's why, that was the reason he came up with her being mad at him. I don't know. So uh, Jackie moved around a few times and I think the entity supposedly like followed her several times. Um, but eventually uh, it did leave her alone and uh, she moved to Los Angeles at some point. I'm not actually sure. I haven't heard much about her in the last few years. So I don't know if she's still alive or not. Um, I had heard that, I thought I'd heard that she died, but I could be wrong about that. Um, and I've also heard that, uh, other people that live in the original house in San Pedro, which is still there, it's been fixed up. Like it doesn't look like a dump or anything like that. Um, that they've also heard where noises coming, noises coming from the attic, but I don't know if that's true or not, but I, you know, that might just be rumors, but I have heard that. So the last case we want to talk about, uh, today is the South Shields poltergeist do you remember this case yeah i read i have the book this is I from read, 2005 yeah read the book yeah i was impressed with the book i liked it some crazy shit happened in this one too. yeah and i was like man that's one of the best poltergeist cases i ever heard of but then i was talking to steve mara about it and he goes yeah but then he goes look at here look at this and look at that and i was going oh yeah there's problems with this case I, I mean, there's kind of... It's an interesting case. It is. Well, they're all interesting, yeah. but... I, I find them interesting from, like, a, a ghost story point of view. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe a lot of There's a chance happen. this one could be faked. I mean, you you can find good poltergeist cases and, and copy... Make a good poltergeist case by copying that one. They may have done that with this, but we'll see. Yeah. That's, you know... <laughs> all right so now the thing about this one is that i guess the couple at the center of this didn't really want any uh publicity or to be made fun of or anything like that so they've seems like they've managed to keep their real names uh under wraps so usually whenever anybody talks about this case i don't see a lot of stuff online about this case to be honest with you uh, but they're usually just referred to as Mark and Marianne. That's, you know, nobody knows what their real names. I mean, I'm sure somebody knows, but I don't know. So this couple, like I said, this happened in 2005. And this was in uh, England. So they were in their 20s uh, at the time that this occurred. And they had a three-year-old son whose name was Robert. Now they had lived in this, uh, it was a terrace house in uh, South Shields, England, which is kind of like a seaside town. Uh, they lived there for quite a long time with absolutely nothing weird happening at all. Um, but then in December of 2005, all kind of weird shit started to happen for some reason. So at first it kind of started small as usual. Uh, doors opening and closing on their own. Um, objects turning up in places where they shouldn't have been. Like, you know, going missing from one place and popping up somewhere you know where they were supposed to be also uh bad cold spots and weird banging sounds coming out of the walls so you know this is pretty upsetting but um they weren't really all that alarmed about it i guess it wasn't like constant or anything like that now one of the first things that like really freaked them out like this had been going on for a while and it was like pretty creepy but one of the first things that really freaked them out was uh mark and marianne came home one evening and found that in the kitchen, two chairs uh, had been stacked on top of the kitchen table. Like, and obviously nobody, it's very, very poltergeist. Um, you know, where the 
chairs kind of like uh, arrange themselves into a weird configuration. So they had that kind of thing happen, which, yeah, that'd be a little freaky if you walked in and saw that. Um, also, one night they came home and found that a very heavy, like, uh, dresser or like a chest of drawers had moved into a total other bedroom all by itself. So it kind of like teleported, yeah. like you said. So, you know, there was there was that. So, again, that would be pretty weird. Now, from the night that they saw the dresser move, they didn't see it move. They just saw that it was in a different place. And that seemed to be, like, kind of the kicking off point for all of it because all kind of crazy shit started happening after that. Um, one night, a couple nights later, Mark and Marianne are getting into bed. All of a sudden, Marianne feels something hit her in the head. So she looks around like, what the fuck was that? And it was one of her, the son's, like, um, toy dogs. He had, like, a little stuffed toy dog. And it was one of those. And he's like, well, that was in Robert's room, obviously. And their kid was also in his room, sleeping. So Marianne couldn't figure out, like, how this dog, like, where it could have come from. You know what I mean? Like, she hadn't seen it in there before. So she's sitting there, like, thinking about it. And then another one of the kid's toys, another toy dog, comes flying through the room and hit her again, like, much harder this time. Like, something had been, like, something had thrown, it was just a stuffed animal, but it, like, hit her, like, really hard. Like, something had thrown it really hard. So, the two of them are just, like, completely mystified. And then, a couple of moments after that, they said that it was just completely, like, pelted with stuffed animals from their son's room. And they couldn't figure out where they were coming from. They said it kind of looked like they were just coming out of midair. You know what I mean? Like they were just appearing and like hitting them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's kind of And they were coming from like every direction. That's kind of why when I was reading this book, I was like, man, this sounds like the real fucking thing because it was similar to what happened to me at Mammoth Mountain, the way it was described in this book. This is kind of the way it really seems. But you could have still faked it. You could have still faked it because you're just writing a book. Well, if yeah, you know, I mean, I can make up all kind of yeah. things. And like, if, you, if nobody else was there seeing it but me. That's right. <laughs> if you know, but if you have good sources on what a real case looks like, you know what to write. Yeah. And that's kind of what Steve said about this case. Because there's some shit that happens in the actual case that doesn't jive up. Like a table fucking gets partially melted and then returns to normal. But they didn't take a picture of it in the melted state. Which that was something that a good investigator would have done is immediately taken a picture. Well, that's of something that most people would yeah. do. Like, right. and especially nowadays that everybody has a cell phone. Yeah. And, like, you would just, you'd be like, holy shit, look at that. Yeah. And it was sending text messages and stuff. It but was, we, yeah. But we don't get any photographs of the fucking texts or we don't, we don't have any data on that. So, I mean, the story's really good. To be but fair, this was 2005. Yeah. Like, I kind of, like, people didn't have, like, smartphones like they have now. Yeah. So it's like a lot of phones didn't have. Well, 2005, like, did phones have... They had photo capability, but I think they just took, like, really, really shitty photos. Did yeah. they not? I, think I can't they were, really... They were, I think they were okay. I they can't were, really remember. I think they were okay. I mean, 2005 they were, they, was they a long time They weren't ago. HD, but they were probably, like, 240 or 420. Yeah, yeah they, they were, were, like, kind of shitty 420, photos. 420, about, about like that. So I don't, I don't really remember, like, how good the photos were from phones. But they were in there with investigative fucking stuff and, and film, you know, 35 millimeter cameras and shit. You know, and digital cameras. So why didn't they took pictures? Why didn't they take a picture of that damn table that was melted? Like I said, you think table. if anything, you'd really want right. to take a picture of that or video, yeah. ideally. Yeah. So but. that's the problem with this case. I'm not saying it's a it's a false case. It's just that if they actually investigated this case, they didn't do a very good job because they didn't get pictures that they should have taken. They got pictures of other shit though. That's what I mean. That's kind of what makes me really skeptical about a lot of these is that, and especially ones that happen nowadays, because now there's no excuse. Like, because everybody has a fucking cell phone. Everybody has cameras. Like, everything's really cheap. And people are taking pictures of shit all the time. And it's like, if this shit was going on, you'd think somebody somewhere. But see, the thing about it, too, is that nowadays it's also really, really easy to fake that shit, too. Yeah. And, like, pretty much anybody that has, like, a smartphone can make something that looks like realistic. So that's another problem. Like I said, you know, I, I can, uh, make pretty much anything you want in Photoshop. Yeah. Give me an hour. <laughs> 
and I'll make a picture of whatever you want. So, um, you know, and most people can do that nowadays. So it's a lot harder to, because it's so much easier to like fake photos and fake videos. So it's, photos and videos aren't, um, you know, uh, aren't proof anymore, really, yeah. because everything's just fucking, you can fake anything like really quickly and really easily. So yeah, so they're getting all these stuffed animals thrown at them from every direction. So I guess Mark and Marianne are trying to like pull the blankets like over their heads. Um, but then whatever the thing was, they said, started kind of yanking on the blankets, like trying to pull the, the comforter off of them. Now, while this was going on, Mark supposedly like uh, screamed like he was in pain or something. And he said he felt like something was burning him. So Marianne said she looked at the place where he said the pain was and saw 13, which again, that's a little fishy because that's like, ooh, a scary number. Um, she saw like all these angry red marks, like uh, like claw marks, essentially. So 13 claw marks, that's a lot of claws. Just saying. I don't know how far apart they were. Um, so yeah, so that happened. And then that was the last thing that happened that night. Um, the next morning, these 13 scratch marks had allegedly disappeared. Which, convenient. But you know what I mean. So, from that point forward, uh, the poltergeist activity continued. Uh, usually utilizing Robert's toys and uh, various technological devices to kind of fuck with them. So, you'd get stuff like stuffed toys moving across the floor, like, by themselves. Or making weird noises, like... You know, stuffed animals that weren't supposed to make noises would be making noises. Um, you know, toys turning on and off, like, by themselves. Um, the, very famously, on one occasion, a toy bunny was found sitting at the top of the stairs with a box cutter, like, in between its paws. Which, you know, it didn't come from the store like that, obviously. Um, another time, Robert had this kind of wooden rocking horse. And they found it hanging from a ceiling fan, like, by its little reins or whatever. And um, they also had shit happening, like, the, the sink or the toilet would look like it filled up with blood or, like, some kind of, like, red fluid, obviously. Um, and then it would disappear a few minutes later. Again, convenient. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not being an asshole. I'm just saying. It's very convenient. Now, um... So, as you mentioned before, this poltergeist was very uh, communicative. So, it had... So, Robert, their kid, had this magnetic drawing board thing. And so, the poltergeist apparently would write shit on it. Um, and he would write shit like, just go now, R.I.P., or die, bitch. Which, that's nice. <laughs> so... <laughs> GTFO says the ghost. Real, real creative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you're dead. It's like, can't you think of anything better to do? It's like, geez. Although, other than like fucking with me. That one girl that I talked to from Paranormal Witness, she sent me that them. I believe exactly what happened. That cat thing. The cat, yeah. And that's all that poltergeist did was write the word cat, and I was like, that's it. That, that, that's poltergeist. It's very simple. They don't have verbal skills. It's coming from, got to be coming from like the left portion of the brain. It doesn't have very good verbal skills. That so they can't write well. I thought that speak. was the right portion. Or is it the, the, the right portion? Have. They don't have doesn't have ver, verbal. I thought skills. the left was like the logic. Yeah, I think it's coming from the part that has to do with spatial awareness. That's where I th that's where I think is doing it. Because evidently the language isn't over there. Maybe the ghost just or really very like, maybe primitive. Just, la maybe language. they just really like cats. It's not a ghost. You know, I know. Like, I'm making a yeah. joke. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, whatever it is, it doesn't have the ability. It doesn't really have the ability for any kind of complicated speech or writing. So, so hence die, bitch. Yeah, die, bitch. Cat. That's all. Go. Mine just wrote go. Or the in this case, it also wrote, you're dead, mm. which I'm like, right. okay. Yeah, bring it. So, yeah. Uh, Marianne said that she also got death threats from this entity via text message. 
So it's a technological ghost. This was 2005, so you know what I mean. Um, so apparently they couldn't trace these particular text messages to um, any account that was, you know, real. Uh, and also Marianne said that she would get calls on her cell phone from her home phone number, like the landline, even when there was nobody home. So there was that going on as well. So, uh, yeah, so this went on for a while. And then uh, the whatever it was starts fucking with the kid, Robert, who was three, I think. Uh, at one point, they found Robert in his room, like, all kind of swaddled up in his blanket. And there was a plastic table, like, balancing on top of him. They found him like that. And he looked like, they said when they found him, like, his eyes were open, but he seemed like he was asleep. Like, he was unresponsive. You know what I mean? Um, and at another time, they actually, uh, they lost the kid for a little while. Like, they didn't know where he was. And then they found him, like, crammed into this little closet. Like, he was, again, like, wrapped up real tight in his blanket, and he was just, like, stuffed in a closet someplace and was, like, unresponsive. So the, that was happening uh, more than once. So at this point, uh, the two of them were freaking out, so they call in paranormal investigators. Uh, the two of them were named Mike Hollowell and Darren Ritson. So they got to the house about six months after the uh, phenomena had started. Now, the investigators, they said when they first got there, uh, because of the things that the family had described to them so far, they were very, very skeptical because they said, this sounds like some crazy shit. So, you know, you got to be like kind of like that. You come in and you're just like, maybe these people are nuts. I don't really know. So they were like kind of were like, yeah, that's it's too much. Um, but apparently they reported later, like I said, I don't know if this is true or not, but they reported later that. Uh, yeah, as soon as we got there, like, some weird fucked up shit happened. And so, like, we believed in them. So, they both said that they saw a whole bunch of crazy shit, like, happening in this house. They said that they saw doors opening and closing by themselves. They said that they saw some of the kids' toys, like, moving around on their, on their own, like, by themselves. They saw objects levitating. They saw lamps swinging back and forth on the ceiling. Um, and they said that their equipment was just, like, all fucking fucked up, like, all the time. Like, you know, so it was, like, batteries were draining, like, stuff was going off and on. It was just, like, all kind of crazy shit. Um, they said that they had had, uh, knives hurled at them, like, by some invisible force or whatever. Been there, done that. Well, yeah, you had a knife thrown at you. Yeah. Kind of. Not at me, thrown at the back door. Yeah. Um, they said they heard weird voices coming from a baby monitor. And they said that they saw weird messages um, that were like threats showing up on pieces of paper or on Robert's like little uh, whiteboard, like his little thing that he had in his room. Um, now, again, they didn't capture a lot of the stuff on film, which, like I said, you know, that's convenient. But uh, they did actually take a few pictures. There are a couple of pictures, I think, like floating around out there that I've seen. Um that kind of look like that have uh kind of chairs like stacked on top of the table like in kind of a crazy way that looks like yeah it looked like a poltergeist phenomenon right it did like i it's there's i don't know if i'd call it a famous photo but i've seen it like several times and it does look pretty weird i don't you yeah. know i'm not saying it couldn't have been fake it's kind I'm, of stuff ours would do i'm just saying it, it could have been like fake a yeah. anything could have been fake i got pictures of what happened to us at mammoth and, and shit okay yeah it's towels laying there so what chair upside down so what well it was impressive to us you know what I mean? We were just recording it, you know? Yeah. You're like, why the hell did we take a picture of that a long time ago? Well, it's because that shit, we didn't do it. You know, something yeah. else did it. You know? It was yeah, crazy. that's the thing. If you don't have the context for the photo, like, right, yeah, yeah, we just walked in a room and found it like this. You show it to yeah. somebody else, You're they're like, like why the, the fuck do you that? take a picture of that for? Yeah. Well, you had to be there. You had to understand what was going on. Right. Right. <laughs> Jeffy Art says, when a ghost tells someone to die, is it necessarily a decent threat? If the ghost kills someone, wouldn't the victim's ghost seek vengeance on the original ghost? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like there's probably all kind of like ghost protocol that we're... Oh, ghost protocol. That was a movie, wasn't it? But, uh, but yeah. So, yeah. So there is kind of like one famous photo from this case which has chairs like at kind of crazy angles and shit like that. 
Now, both of the investigators also said that they saw an apparition, like, uh, hanging out in the kids' room, like, on several occasions. Now, according to one of their researchers, Hollowell, this, whatever it was, looked like a big black figure, like a shot. Like a shadow kind of guy. According to this, I have He a didn't package. really ha what? According to this, I have a package delivered down there. Oh, well, probably you should go I look out go the front door then. On. Yeah. You should go look. Don't yeah. leave it on the it's front... My, it's my pull-up bar. Don't leave it on the front porch yeah. overnight. Somebody might steal it. Even though nobody can see our front door from the street, but still. Um, but yeah, so it's this big black shadow figure with... Didn't really have... He couldn't really see a face, he said. But he said that it you could tell that it was evil. You know what I mean? Like it was this force field of like menace like coming off him. Now, apparently, uh, the investigator said that this black shadow man uh, once attacked Mark in like while they were watching and left really obvious claw marks across his back. And then the next day, the claw marks had vanished. So they actually did get this on film but apparently the quality of the film is not really all that impressive. Like if you saw it and you didn't know what you were looking at, I don't think that it would, you'd be like, what the fuck am I looking at? You know what I mean? So th this is really weird. And I guess this happens like a lot of times, but not too long after all this like crazy violent shit happened. Uh, the investigator said that all of that shit happened and then like literally a day or two later like everything just stopped and like nothing happened again and they didn't ever find any explanation for it and they didn't really find because like i said this does sound like poltergeist shit but it doesn't it doesn't really sound like there was a focus as such i don't really know enough about the actual people at the center of it yeah they had a kid but the kid was only three so you don't really hear too much about three-year-old kids being poltergeist focused, but you do kind of hear about like older people being poltergeist focused sometimes. So maybe that was the case in this because they were only in their twenties. So I don't know. Maybe that's the case there. Like I said, they don't really want their real names known. So, I mean, as far as I know, this could be a completely made up story and somebody could just be saying, yeah, they don't want their identities known because they're afraid they're going to get made fun of. And so somebody just made it up like it was like an ARG or something. I don't really know. But, uh, but yeah, so they said that it stopped just abruptly and they never found any explanation for it. Um, so, you know, they apparently, according to the two investigators, though, they're like, Hey, we went there, like looking to kind of debunk this whole shit because we thought the claims they were making were outlandish and we were like going to prove them wrong or whatever. But we came away being like, yeah, that shit is real. Cause we saw a bunch of stuff like that. So shortly after the phenomena stopped, uh, Mark and Marianne apparently were like just sick of that shit. So they moved away from the area. And as I said, their real names have actually never been released to the public as far as I know. I mean, unless somebody found out. And uh, they seem to have been able to keep it that way, which is kind of amazing uh, in, this er in this era. So that's another thing that kind of makes me suspect that maybe this is a made-up story like from, from I, start to finish because... <laughs> You miss what? I miss what, what made it what made it a fucking fake story. Um, what, did you get a package? Yeah, it was down oh, there. Okay. I put it up. I said the fact that Mark and Marianne yeah. have been able to keep their identity secret yeah. even to this day. I'm like, that, yeah, hard. in this day and age, that seems a little suspicious. Maybe they never existed. Who knows? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, I they have, like, you know, the names of the investigators, and those are real people, so... I don't know. It just does kind of sound like maybe this was written initially as like a fictional story. I don't know. Maybe. No way of knowing. Not enough, not enough information. That's what I'm saying. And I don't really know because I was talking about while you were gone. I was talking about how a lot of the shit in this case sounded like poltergeist, but there's no there's no obvious like poltergeist focus. They had a kid, but the kid was three. Yeah, not enough. And I mean, it's entirely Personal. entirely possible that one of them could have been a focus. They were just in their 20s. As That's strong not... as this thing was, you're talking about somebody 13 to 15. But I mean, That's I reasonable. you know, you, you have heard of cases where it's happened with an older person. Though. Yeah, but I don't know if those are real. But that's, see, yeah, and that's yeah. what I'm saying too. It's like I don't know enough about any of these right. people to like speculate about because, you know, in, in the case we were talking about before about Jackie Hernandez, we were saying yeah. it's like, yeah, she was older. Yeah. 
but they still thought that if it was a poltergeist, then she was the focus because she was going through some fucked up shit. You can do it when you're older. It's just that the the, the you know the the effects aren't as strong from what I've seen. You know. Yeah, and like I said, it's not saying it couldn't happen. I'm just yeah. saying that it would probably be really unusual. Prime times between like like I said, 12, 13, to like 15, 16. 16 might even be too old. Um, you might be more mentally sorted out by then. Yeah, you're over the hill. You're kind of over the hill, right? You got as far as that goes. You want it to be <laughs> in transition. Puberty, basically, basically, is what you're talking about. You want that. It's when it's going to be real fucking exp- strong and explosive, and it won't last for long. A couple weeks, a couple months, maybe. Very rarely a year. I think... It, I think... Enfield lasted the longest, and that might have been 18 months. I think it was 18 months. 18 months, yeah. Which, yeah, but and that's unusual. Unusual. This case is... Constant activity. This case, it seemed like it lasted... Well, I think the the investigators got there at six months, and it didn't last longer, much longer than that, because they were there investigating, and then it just stopped suddenly, like, while they were there. Based on... What I saw and everything that I've read that says, yeah, that's real, that that's like mine, they're short duration, a month, maybe two. A month, you know, that, that's about how long it lasts. Yeah, I mean, your shit was what, like fucking two yeah. weeks or yeah. something like that? Yeah, about that. I think it was like a two-week period. Yeah, and I was fucking happy when it was over, and I was wor- worried if it was going to come back, you know, which yeah. it did eventually, but nowhere near the intensity and... And the the effects changed, you know, the phenomena changes over time, it matures with you, but it's not like it was, you know, but nothing's like it was when you're at that age, you know, that 12 to 15, that, that, er, that, er, that time span is fucking intense when you're a kid, if you remember, at least it was for me, do you remember what that was like? Life yeah, is but fucking it, real in full color in 3D. It's very Yeah, but it's I mean, I don't know. I don't remember it being that different, but everybody's different, you know what I mean? You're between man and animal. You know, you're you're, you're still manimal. Manimal. You're almost like part that of, show. Well, you're human and animal kind of at the same time. It's like you're having an, an awakening, you know. You're start your consciousness is starting to become that of a of a, of a person, if you ask me. What it feels like but you still kind of have a bunch of animal instincts and stuff. It, it, it's a weird time. I mean, I remember... That's the weird thing about it. It's like... And I'm not, like, discounting other people's, um, you know, experiences because everybody's different, like I said. But I didn't have, like, a huge transition um, between pre-puberty and post-puberty. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't seem like... Like, it seemed like an upheaval, but not like a huge, like, oh my god, this is like the worst thing ever. Like, you know what I mean? I, just, I don't know. I didn't think it was bad, but I uh, I fucking... You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't... I didn't wasn't find it, big. like... I didn't find it particularly, like, over the top or for me, different than... For me, it was. Well, yeah, I'm sure it, it is strong. for some people. Yeah, I'm just strong. saying, like, for me, it was kind of like just, oh, you know what I mean? But, you know. Yeah. It was just... It wasn't like a big For me, deal. it was a big difference. It wasn't a big difference. Big difference. Like, the me of 12 versus the me of 15, it was a totally different person. You know, it, the feeling, the way you feel, looking through your eyes, you know what I'm talking about, your being, it was, it was totally different. And it happened in a short period of time. Yeah, see, I don't remember that. Like, I, I kind of remember more, and I don't know, maybe it was different from people, like, looking at it from outside of me. But, um... I don't, I remember it as more of like a very, very gradual transition. I don't remember this kind of, cause I know some people just say like, oh my God, like puberty, all of a sudden I woke up and everything was different Yeah. and it's like, and it seemed like very sudden, but I don't remember anything like that. I remember no. like a very, 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 very slow gradient. I don't not remember me. any kind of, no, not me. Yeah. It was I don't like, remember any kind of like, it was like a year into like, you know what I mean? It was like a year of fucking slowly waking up and becoming conscious what the hell was going on it was like that and it was like starting all of a sudden you start to see everything in full color you start you feel like you're here more than you were before you know you're in see and i'm not really sure like i've thought about this because i'm just like well you're a girl though it's different because i was yeah. being, i was being flooded with testosterone you weren't all right and test is fucking and then i inject test 
you put test into a woman, they'll tell you the same thing if you put enough of it in there. Like, just talk to those female to male transition kids, all right, that they're doing now in their teens. They say the fucking test is fucking, they just say it changes everything. It does. If, you're, if, you, if you've been biologically female or, you know, when you're before puberty, you're kind of neuter in a way. You're not really one or the other, you know, fucking at a, at a hormonal level. You are physically, but not when it comes to blood chemistry. And it's a big change. Especially I had a fucking, I had a strong puberty, real strong. Yeah, some yeah. people do. I, you right. know, my, I remember knowing some people that yeah, have like that. Yeah, it was like far. But the thing spot. about it is that I never have like strong, like super strong reactions to anything, I've and I that. and I never have done. Yeah. Like whatever it is, like whatever it's, you know, whether it's uh, medication or whether it's menopause or whether it's anything. That, people are talking about. Oh my god, it's the worst thing ever, and it's just kind of like meh. Yeah, nah. you don't. You're not. You're not what's called in the in the gym rat word world. You're not a strong responder. No, I never you have been. Really like I said, to anything, yes. to anything. Like sometimes, like I'll have some things that I'm just kind of like, oh, okay. But it's just like it's never anything like, oh my god, like it's never <clears> like that, <throat> compared ever. to what I've taken and what I look like now and this and that. And know what I know. I'm what's called a hyper responder. Anything you give, yeah, me, you must I be. fucking respond twice. What a normal person. But see, I always feel like. I always feel bad because I always feel like you expect me to respond the same way as you, and I yeah. just don't. And I'm just yeah. like, should I pretend? <laughs> yeah, I say, you don't feel anything? No. no. This isn't happening? That isn't happening? No. Like, like, well, I don't want to give you any more, you know what I mean? But it, you should be, but she doesn't really respond to anything. No, I don't. Or, she does, but it's very slight. It's not a strong response. <clears throat> she do, still gains benefit from things. It's just not as much benefit as it should. As she should, and I don't want to like push it because she's female, and I know the data of what what a female can take and what they can't take, and you don't want to push her into the male into the male range of some of these androgens. I'm though. just well. The thing about it is that I've always been like I said, anything to do with like biology, anything, yeah. like whether it's drugs or whether it's illness or anything like that. I'm always just kind of like. Like I said, you, you, and this is from when I was a little, little kid. I'd get sick. You know, people I knew would get, like, horribly, horribly sick. Oh, my God, I was in bed for two weeks. I would get sick for, like, three hours. And I'd be like, yeah. man, I kind of feel like shit. And they'd be like, oh, I'm all right now. You know what I mean? And I've been like that, like, pretty much my entire life. Yeah. Everything is just very baseline. I don't, like, stray too far from the baseline. Mm. Um, and I've always just been like that. I don't know if that's that's got to be like a genetic or biological thing. If you take a girl and you start giving her a bunch of tests to, to try to make her male, what they report is something called, first of all, a huge boost in aggression and confidence. They feel real good. And then the second thing that kicks in is um, something called a clarity, where you have real, and I get clarity a lot too where you have real crystal clear emotionless opinions on things where you're becoming more kind of like on kind of like on the autistic scale I guess you could say where you're just real analytical and you're not really Well see about, I've I'm already like that so yeah. maybe that's kind of why well, you have a lot of kind of like male features in some ways, too. I, I don't know. So maybe that's why you it might, doesn't really, because I'm like, yeah. well, I don't notice any difference. You might because have already I've, had I've little, always thought like that. You might have already had a little bit of a fucking heightened test levels. You might have been a little bit. The only thing some that of I. Your build, actually, you got broad shoulders. You might have already yeah. kind of been a little bit more of a high. It, 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 you, you, you're funny. She, I've said this before on the show. She's the least chick-like chick I've ever done. I'm not going to say that she's like a dude. God, please don't, don't say, that. say that. That's insulting. <laughs> Women tend to be real emotional and erratic and fucking, um, uh, fucking very difficult to deal with. She's actually the opposite. She's very steady and easy to deal with and rational. Um, very skilled at things and very meticulous. Well, a lot of women aren't like that. Uh, she also doesn't really have female interests to, for the most part. She's not very fussy when it comes to like things like makeup and grooming and she, like you know. Like I all, do all that, but I don't really like girly shit. And yeah, a lot she's of she's not into girly shit. And I'm just 
a lot of times, like, I'll put on makeup, I'll fix my hair and stuff, but in a way, like, it's uh, it makes me very impatient. Did you notice how when I said grooming, she talked about herself? No. Real chick like girls groom their boyfriends. They're constantly doing things with their hair, and they want to look into your ear and fucking make sure you're pulling fucking Gross. hairs out of this and do that. that shit and fucking, your own they want to do, you know, they want to, they want to groom <laughs> you too. Now, when women get that older, is weird. That's not weird. That's no, I'm just, just saying for me, that's weird. Yeah, so you know, I'm just like gross. I got to do my own her, shit. You do your own. She doesn't shit. even have her. You're a, you're an adult. Most most most. Well, you see, women change also as they grow older. The, the baseline was, you know, women in their 20s and shit. Like, they'll groom, they used to groom, groom on you, you know what I mean? Ape, ape, female ape type fucking behaviors, you know? Um, yeah, don't making that sure shit. that you're fucking never looking straight and your clothes are good and your hair is good and, you know, but she she's like, she's like a dude when it comes to that. Well, no, I'm, my mindset is, um, you're an adult. I figured out how to leave the house being clean and everything, and so can you. I, I, you don't need a babysitter. You don't need somebody to fix you. That's not what it is, though. Figure your shit out. What, that's not why. That's not. Why <laughs> that's lot, that's where I come from. That's not why it. a lot of women are doing that, though. It's no, I know. I'm just saying that's my mindset. It's, it's just like, like if you can't yeah. figure out like how to pluck your own nose hairs and shit yeah. like that, that's your problem. The women. I'm not fixing that. She's misinterpreting what, what the emotion is behind it. Usually what it is is it's a woman caring for you. They're fussing and trying to care. But she's not like that. Okay. She's, she's thinking in terms of hygiene. This You could be clean as shit. doesn't matter. They're going to be... Especially when they're younger. You know. And maybe that's growing up in Central and South America. I don't know. Uh, it might be that fucking North American women, they're... They're not really raised to be real affectionate. They're raised to be office workers, most of them. So they're not really oriented towards relationships. Not in the way Central and South American women are. Uh, they think that's kind of beneath them. So that might be part of it. I don't know about order. that. I just, you know, no, I've, a, I've just always been a more independent person. So it's not the first thing that I think it's of. It's pretty well known that North American women look, kind of look down on homemakers. They don't, they, don't, they don't like that. They like professional women for some reason. They want to work there. They're told to, to, to value that because which is because which is stupid because you're just they're just throwing themselves into professions that guys have hated for fucking centuries. You know, fucking guys. Have gotten well, up I'm a big that. advocate of do whatever you want to do. Yeah, man. Right, yeah. If you want to stay home and take care of kids, then mm -hmm. more power to you. Yeah. My mom was really into that. Um, yeah. She you know, she loved kids. She ran a daycare. She had four of us and yeah. fucking. Man, I don't know how she did it, but holy crap. And she, I think she always kind of wanted me to be like that, and I'm just not like that. My sister's not like that yeah. either. Yeah, uh, Ben's saying mothering. Yeah, more of a nurturing. No, I wouldn't say mothering, but more of a nurturing. And I'm not, well, and the weird thing about it is nurturing. that I'm very, very mothery, like, toward Pookie. Yeah. Like, but I've yeah. never I've never really liked children. Um, You know, I'm not a real mom kind of person i'm just not i've just i've never been like that i told my mom when i was 15 or 16 years old it's like hey, you know what i don't think i'm ever gonna have kids and she said to me when i was 15 or 16 oh you'll change your mind when you get older but i never did never did yeah, it's just, just it, it just wasn't my thing i think man. it's hormones wasn't my thing probably hormones and i don't really consider myself dude like in a lot of ways because no. uh, in a lot of ways like dudes piss me off like more, way more than women do um, and I find dudes a lot more irrational than women. Like, um, I hang, I, I don't mind, like I hang out with dudes and I can talk to them about stuff, but, um, in my experience, like dudes are a lot more irrational and like much harder to deal with than women are just in general. Like not always like it, you know, everyone's different. Oh, man, they got some psycho ass women out there. <laughs> well, no, I'm not saying that. I've met some, I'm, yeah. I've met some, I'm just, yeah, no, yeah. I'm talking in very, very general yeah. terms. In very general terms. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I've never really found... I don't even know if I've found, like, anything between... Because, man, I've met, like, some really cool dudes and some really awesome women. Um, but, you know, I've met psychos of both genders also. Uh, so I don't really discriminate. I'm just like, just be cool. I don't give a shit, like, yeah. what... You know you know what I mean? I, I don't really, like, put people into boxes like that. Just kind of, like, be cool. Okay, so we're done with that case. Are you hungry? Yeah. All right, now I'll Hold give on. something to eat. Um, I'll get something to eat.
Yeah. Go ahead and shut that shit down. You're going to shut that shit down? You're going to shut the shit down. I'm just giving the fucking word to shut it down. Kinda yeah, like, we had a whole discussion like, about like, this. Yeah, see, if I tell her to shut it down, who's shutting it down, me or her? And well, I, it, ha- it, it you know, people it, have said, well, no, that's you. It has it to be you because you always have to be and in then charge. Other, some girls came to your defense. Just, says, no, just no, like that's, you, that's just changed. like you, always have to be like, right about everything. You always like, have no, to be in no, charge see, of everything. And some girls that came came out because dudes have very fragile ju- egos, and they have to feel like no they're fragility. always. I'm not fr- no And they always have to feel like they're in charge, and that they're it's always no fragility in the ego. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, there is. No, there is not. Well, and the fact that you that's got really just, defensive about it makes me no, even more just, suspicious. That, that's, just, that's, just old, that's just an old-fashioned, outmoded way of oh, is chicks it? fucking trying, to, trying okay. to explain the way dudes do things. Yeah, this is not really... No. If uh-huh. anything... I, man, look, I've had the high progesterone <laughs> and the fucking... Uh, the high progesterone fucking female fucking uh, biochemistry fucking... When you're on tread, you know, you'd be cry, cry baby bitch, sentimental... All right, and had that whole thing, and all you'd be insecure on trend. That's not that's not a male feeling. That's it's a female feeling. Feeling really, you know, being all insecure on that. And what it is is you're on when you're on trend, being being bitch like you projecting that. Oh well, you're insecure. No, 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 no. no. I'm gonna tell you right now, like <laughs> the difference between. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know how close that shit like approximated because some of the stuff you described, I'm like, yeah, that sounds like being a woman all the time, and that's pretty oh, shitty. Man, it was, it was, but it was being Superman and super bitch at the same time. But see, the thing about it is that when women feel insecure, yeah, they turn the insecurity inwards. When okay. men feel insecure, they turn it outwards, like somebody else is causing that. No, I don't think um, that. in general, I mean, not yeah. everybody. Like I said, yeah. all everybody's different. But from what I found, like women are usually like, "Oh shit's fucked up. I, I did that. I, yeah. you know, they blame themselves." Whereas a man is like, "Oh shit's fucked up. Somebody else did that shit. Yeah. It wasn't me." So th- that's very general. Like I said, that's you know, not everybody's like that. But that's in general, that's kind of what I found. Men, oh. men turn shit outward. All right, Jed. So I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give the fucking uh, the command of execution. All right, go ahead. On the counter. I'll end it when I want to end it. Okay. Then fucking <laughs> sh- sh- shut no, that shit down. We're, we're gonna be, when are we, when are we going to come back? Friday. We're, we're going to do the sign right. tracks okay. show Friday. Oh, okay. I got shit. I got to make a new intro for that yeah. too. I haven't done right. that yet. <laughs> I only just made the new intro for this show like today. So, I like the new intro. I mean, that came out really nice. I, I thought mean, I, I was it. worried about it because I was like, Oh my God, this is taking forever. And I was just yeah. like, you know, I'm not super good at like video editing. So I'm, you know, I'm very like rudimentary, but, um, I think it came out good. I think it came out good. So we'll see how the sidetracks one, uh, comes out. Okay. I gotta, I gotta make that tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. So we'll see you guys Friday night. Thank you everybody for dropping by. Thank you for your super chats. We love you guys. And we will see you again on Friday evening. Good night.